Can you burn a dragon with fire? Can you kill a reptile with acid? Or is he immune since it comes from his body? So I bet if, say, there is a scene where reptile actually gets thrown into the acid, then it will be the same situation with how Noob Saba got shot into the soul nato. Then it'll be like, ah, Quan Chi's creations don't die easily, or some, some bullshit like that would be explained for why reptile could survive in that. If reptile is immune to the acid, that doesn't mean his clothes are. He comes out and he's like, he is the one still swinging. That would be cool too if we Cut that part out. Cut out that I don't know. <laughs> Three, two, one. Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to the Combat Kings podcast. I'm Sonic IXD, and we got the Force Snake and Trona Dog. And happy summer vacation, everybody! Woo! Summer vacation oh, finally shit. here. Finally, ah, that explains time it. Time okay. for great relaxing and all that kind of stuff. I don't know how long your camera was on, but I didn't notice until you mentioned some vacation that you were wearing that shirt. <laughs> well, he just turned it on. He just I, did it. it was I just a turned quick it on, reveal. yeah, because like yeah. that's the bit basically. <laughs> the, the the bit is I I've been spending like the whole like so many months working on the snowblind video, so I'm like now I'm basically on vacation for like a week or two. So that oh, okay. that's that's the bit, and then sort of I'm like hey hey, even though it's like freaking like really cold here right now. <laughs> but <laughs> I also have this, which I thought was pretty cool. This this shiny. I do like that. I did notice it. Shining light. It um the purpose of this is like when you turn the lights off, it'll like shine all over the room. Maybe I'll do that later. You can also like I uh, like it. Turn one side on and stuff like that. The um so that's check, cool. I could put up my face here. Get it, like all the shining shenanigans there. Very cool. Very <laughs> cool. I have one of those too, but it's a projector onto like the ceiling uh, that makes stars, like a little galaxy on ah, the ceiling. Yeah. Bitches love that. <laughs> I've got something like that. Yeah, good. Bitches love it. Bitches love that. So what's very interesting <laughs> was I just wanted something like kind of like just shines there automatically for the episode, which is kind of nice. I I, I could is get it one hollow that... or is there a top to it? It is it is hollow. You can actually like it's like can you, you... put reptile in it? <laughs> I don't. Oh, wait 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 wait. <laughs> Can you put can them you on top it, of it? You made a can, great can suggestion. You make it green. Make it green make it and green. put KK, KK in it, so it's like the uh, the soul chamber. <laughs> oh, I gotta get green lights for that. Then I don't know if I can find add-ons for that though. What's I'm fun? so happy the reptile's actually in there. I didn't think it would work. Look at <laughs> our boy. There he I is. see a new shirt design, baby. <laughs> Shining. Right. Oh my gosh! I I completely forgot about this. Give me like three seconds here, just. <laughs> Oh, well, nice. It, it would, that could make a, a fun uh, one. Imagine Reptile in like um, uh, a hot tub with LED lights in it, and he's just there like, yeah. hey, come on in. But it's like the sexy Reptile design that that uh, Sonic has uh, stolen from the, from the Legends. <laughs> it's, it's, it's him yep. in the hot tub like, yeah, come on in, baby. <laughs> what did That'd I come back cool, to? Yeah. Why am I hearing about like Witcher 3 Geralt thing or you, something here? You, you, will, you will find... Actually, yeah, that's the one you go for. But, uh, yeah, you'll find out in the editing process. Hell yeah, I'm excited <laughs> like for that. Two weeks from now. <laughs> I just thought of like, you know how Aaron Black opens up the wanted poster in MK11 for his intro? Imagine he opens up the reptile one and it's just the naked reptile like art of him laying down. <laughs> I will edit that Have you seen when, this man? When, when he's in MK12. I will do that. <laughs> we, 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 need, we need a t-shirt of uh, Sonic's little character, his little, little uh, avatar, uh -huh. open it up and it's like some reptile fan art and he's like, oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> even better is the Jacko pose, actually. That's an even funnier like wanted poster if he's just caught doing the Jacko. <laughs> And anyways, so what I just remember, I actually completely forgot about this. I was I was going to mention this, but I just forgot about it. Look what finally came in the mail. Yeah. Ta-da. It's finally here. Ta my freaking reptile t-shirt <laughs> that I have been, I ordered. Oh, and also, I got to show the back part of it, of course. Got to show. Got to show the goods. Got to show, gotta show the goods. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The cheeks. Cheeks. But yeah, this t-shirt... I ordered it since November, and then it just came in recently. I had literally given a pope on it. I think I think my my reaction to when this came into the mail w wasn't necessarily like I was happy, but that was my secondary reaction. My first reaction was angry. I'm like, you freaking freak! Took you this long? <laughs> like, okay, I'm glad I got it though. <laughs> I feel for you, homie. I'm very grateful that I was born in a place where everyone buys shit because they just send things here pretty quickly. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Uh, to be fair, like everyone I think sells this- to America, baby. All my shit made in China. All right, <laughs> this coffee cup with Marvel characters on it probably still made in China. <laughs> so I get my shit very quickly. They have an express route to my oversaturated fat country that loves to buy <laughs> shit. <laughs> But to be fair, I think this T-shirt company is like in America. I- I'm not too sure. They probably have other factories around and stuff. Well, but yeah, that just it's still a win-win. It wouldn't take longer to get to you if it's an Amer- uh, yeah, <laughs> if I'm yeah. American. It would still get to me quickly. Win-win, baby. <laughs> so the, yeah. the, the joke was right. I-, I already had this whole like thing, like thing of a bog, like the 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 the, the Hawaiian uh, T-shirt and the mm-hmm. the lights all planned, shirt. and then they send the the reptile T-shirt. So I'll wear I'll wear that for the next episode. For now, you guys get this this nice. Uh, Hawaiian t-shirt which was uh, thanks to the courtesy of the Combat Kings podcast fundings for this thank you guys very much I really appreciate that (laughs) I mean you might as well pat yourself on the back a little bit too because you're doing like at least 70% of the work (laughs) with all the editing yeah thanks so it's completely fair a wise man once said that no one can look bad in the floral shirt and I tend to agree with that you look very good in that floral shirt thank you so much it is nice thank you (laughs) okay oh I think it would be fun to just like uh, we had some of the things we chatted in the intro of the episode. Like, we can just shove that in right now. Between you and me, guys, and don't you dare post this, I didn't shower last night. I just didn't feel like it. I got done working out, and my buddy wanted the game before he goes on his trip. So I just started playing video games, and then before I knew it, it was time to get buzzed and go to sleep. But as a result, I woke up with hair that's, like, already oiled, and it just styles so nicely <laughs> when you don't shower. I don't know. I'm thinking I may adopt asthma gold strategy of just never showering. Why not? I, I do find it very interesting that you said I'm gonna start recording this. Okay, don't put this in <laughs> as the as the time. Well, as don't the tell beginning. them that. That that's the illusion. We got nothing is real. Nothing Art is a lie. <laughs> nothing Comedy is real. Comedy is fake. It's all planned. Nothing. Reaction videos are fake. They're all pre-watched. <laughs> Like, just get used to it. <laughs> Except mine, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. No, I was going to say, I'm already over here, but I'm just not turning on my camera yet because cool. I have a surprise. Snake is just there being a coy little girl. I don't see anything but his p- profile picture. No, he's just being yeah, a snake. Talking. That's a cool fucking hoodie. I am feeling hey, that let hoodie. Me see, let me see. Are those eyeballs? I swear to God. The one they fear. Rip them and tear. You rip them and tear. The dudes. I think my favorite quote that I'm going to. Oh, the dudes. I love dudes. Dudes is one of the best memes to come out of that series. Like, this is funny if you know the origin, but dudes is so good. And they gave it to the actual demon as a pre order bonus, right? You can put, like, the dudes on one of the demons. Oh, yeah. So. That's funny. Like I, I Doom has a great a lot of great memes. One of my favorites is the Doom guy and Isabel memes because Animal Crossing and Doom guy, uh, the Doom game came out on the same day. Those were fucking good. Yeah. I'm so happy. And the idea that Doom guy is like, he's like being like a, like a the wholesome one. Like a, a, a very a, a wholesome caring parent. Then Isabel's just like I'm going to do a murder. <laughs> <laughs> There were two kind of memes from that. Like the first meme was that they were both like begrudgingly taken into the other one's game, but still enjoyed it. And the other one was the obvious role reversal, where Doom uh, just having a nice day off and fishing and shit. And then Isabelle's just destroying <laughs> demons yes. with a smile on her face, well, like well, casually, like it's Doom like so guy, excited. Doom guys always had like a an, an element of um, wholesomeness to him because like his whole motivation in Doom Two is they killed his pet rabbit. The fact yeah, that he had a yeah. pet rabbit says a lot about him. And I mean, that's why I love it. It's like it's. The exact same premise as John Wick. Oh, the, the that's pets, cute. The, that's the cute. Pet, the pets, the pets even have the same name. They're both called Daisy. Oh, that's funny. Oh, oh. what if what if John Wick like was a... inspired by Doom? That would be very interesting. <laughs> I would not be shocked. No offense, but that um, John Wick writer, I feel like he really was a one and done kind of guy. Because <laughs> <laughs> ever since his films have kind of weird scripts. <laughs> just, just so you know, I and, only saw John Wick one, so I have no idea what's going on with the series. I did see the trailer today for the fourth one, but yeah, it, it's the it's the best one, honestly, the first one I think. Uh, it it's is. a good yeah. movie, yeah. It's um, a good assassination movie. By I, the way, I, what what watch the watch the fight scenes, sure, but on YouTube, but I, I feel like that's. Is, that's about it. Just just watch those. Yeah, <laughs> I, the first one was, I, was just a fun story. Yeah, mm-hmm. the uh, I, I didn't watch any of the sequels. I heard they're also just fun like slasher films. But like, I did see that one yeah. scene where they're like a bunch of people like are walking in there, and like two assassins, John Wick and someone else, are just walking casually, and then using like a silencer, shooting at each other, pew, and then just pew, and just, or something yeah. like that. <laughs> that seemed like a funny meme there. 
<laughs> basically um going in the direction of the fast and the furious movies I oh think. it's just gonna get okay. more and more like outlandish each time <laughs> I, mean, you know, I, I, I can see where you're getting out because there's one particular bit where jo where john takes a fall and you're like he would not survive that. <laughs> that, that fall, slices, but he's, he's just fine. Oh, lovely. It's even funnier when you realize that Keanu, who's like playing him, is like in his 50s. 50, 60, so he's like double dead. If Quick was his yeah. age, he's like double fucking dead. Because like a 55 year old can't survive like falling off a 10 foot roof onto their side, let alone like, like that far, you know? So it's quite Oh, gosh. He's actually but, yeah, almost it, 60. Yeah, then I'm looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> he's at the top of like, age. Hollywood people. Hollywood people have like vampire blood, so they That's live true. for a long time, or <laughs> at least true. they look young for a long time. That's what happens when you eat orphans. You have a diet uh, of, like, orphans, should we, should we you look young this? for a long time. See, <laughs> this is all known stuff. Like Alex Jones told me this. It's all of that. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, that 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 is the mm. greatest source mm. ever. We have actually a ton of topics we can go through. Obviously, the big topic we have to talk about is MK12. Well, originally, the biggest topic would have been, you know, Trotter Dog's hack situation. But, but of course, that's going to be a big topic. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Unfortunately, Dog, you being hacked, big story. But uh, some guy mentioned MK12 in like a, a yeah. thing for the, yeah. the, the people. <laughs> yeah, so but unfortunately, it's, okay. it's, it's not as important. Like, something, like, MK12 mentioned... More important than a guy getting so, hacked and almost losing so, his livelihood. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. So, sorry, dog. Sorry, I, dog. I don't this title. <laughs> this this the title of this video cannot be uh, "Getting Hacked Sucks." Sadly, it's it's gonna be "Mortal Kombat 12 Already Sucks," and then I'll put like an AI generated <laughs> scorpion as the thumbnail, like because everyone's doing that nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, it's okay because they all kind of correlate. Because the man that hacked my account is the same man that actually streamed the earnings call. Or Warner Brothers Discovery, so it's the same <laughs> man. He's just on a streak, you know? He's just on a murder spree. <laughs> but no, it's okay. Like, I'd rather recover the MK12 stuff because I've actually already done a full-on interview about what happened to me, and then I made a full uh, video on you it, did. too. You did. So, it's, I, so that, people kind of get the yeah. idea. It was kind of cute and wholesome, though, that people made videos about me. I find that interesting. When my oh. account was gone, if I searched True Underdog, it was like several people making stories about how I was hacked or gone or terminated. And even like smaller channels that got like only 100 views or something we're still like talking about it and i was like huh it's fascinating how it used to if you googled me the first thing was like a shirtless pic now if you google me the first <laughs> thing is me being hacked <laughs> it's like yeah. underdog hacked <laughs> there, there's a lot so. of people that i never even knew that were like sad that you were gone i was like oh wait this artist i like like knows you i'm like huh that's interesting and like and like yeah, a lot of people were really riled up about the situation i, I do have some other questions i kind of wanted to ask but uh sure. again we can get to that and into that later, but like, um, you guys, uh, are you guys ready to uh, get into the episode? I thought Snake left for a second there, but no, he just blends in so well. <laughs> I saw that like shirt, <laughs> the hoodie. camouflage. That he's still there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the MK logo thing. Yeah, I love that guy. He's nice, cool. very nice. <laughs> Okay, we're back, and now we're going to get the episode started. <laughs> um, there, I have to be honest, a lot of things happened recently, like on the news or all sorts of things. So I have a feeling this will be a very, very off-the-rails episode for what we're going to be like talking about yeah. and, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I think to start things off, we should probably talk about what's been going on with us. We then proceed to not talk about MK12 for two hours. So we decided to show the latter half first in this episode. All right, fellas. Well, recently I was thinking to myself, you know, Netherrealm just can't avoid the leaks. They always happen. There's always a leak for every single game. They can't keep it in their pants. This time it wasn't their fault, though. It was <gasps> Warner Brothers that actually dropped the bag this time. Oh, that's why. Okay, okay. And they gave us perhaps I mean... one of the most mundane leaks of all time and i thought we couldn't go lower than onslaught where it was just a twitter post i didn't think it could get more boring than that like guys here's a new game coming out in like three four months but they <laughs> man did they prove me wrong boy did they outdo themselves by just like a skype call with complete with terrible mic quality yep <laughs> and they just straight up tell us what's coming next so anybody want to weigh in on that how they felt uh where were you when the the most boring leak of all time <laughs> I was waking up from my bed, and I saw, I think I saw your tweet, Trona Dog, and I was thinking like, oh, did the state of play actually reveal a trailer or something like that? I go on YouTube, type Mortal Kombat 12, every 
single one of these videos was just reaction revealed and then AI generated R, AI generated R, AI generated R because <laughs> that's how we see Mortal Kombat 12 characters. And that then like, the meta. I think I think I just click on one of these videos and it's like, oh, okay, it was from a live stream in one sentence. And now I see like all these 10, 20 minute videos of all, <laughs> all these people. It's like, oh, that that's, okay, okay, cool. <laughs> I think the only thing of note with the whole thing is that the the guy says uh, he, he says Mortal Kombat 12 and then Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. Yeah. So what that indicates is that because he, he said the full title, not just Suicide Squad, he said the full title. So it suggests perhaps this will be called Mortal Kombat 12, not something different. I think it's Mortal very Kombat yeah, very whatever. likely it's just going to be called Mortal Kombat 12. I don't think they've totally missed the that chance to call since... it Final Fantasy X2, but like, you know, Mortal Kombat X2, just X2. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry, that's... go ahead. Uh, but like, ever, I think before, like, ever since NRS started, they've only just been calling Mortal Kombat through like the ages. Well, I guess it's not called Mortal Kombat 9, it's called Mortal Kombat, period, right? Technically speaking. Yeah. So, and then Mortal uh, Kombat X was just X, but then for some reason with 11, they just leaned hard into it. Yeah. So I think most likely they're going to do two. Uh, we'll see. Who knows? <laughs> and like Snake pointed out, though, it's not actually their 11th game. Nobody can count. Oh, dad jump scare. I saw the hand. Yeah, it was kinda, <laughs> that was kind of interesting, too. <laughs> Looked like an officer almost. Like I thought I saw a badge. <laughs> oh, there oh. it is. There it is. It's returned. <laughs> I was just saying, just saying how weird that was without that there. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's most likely just going to be called Mortal Kombat 12 because they've kind of locked themselves in by calling it Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat 11, 11 with the previous game. So unless there's some time travel shenanigans or prequel nonsense, there's no reason to give it a different title. If it is a prequel, that's going to make it really confusing that it's called Mortal Kombat 12. <laughs> but I guess, like, they're just trying to keep it on brand and make sure they don't confuse the consumer. Because yeah. keep in mind, even Street Fighter 6 is just called Street Fighter 6 now. Like, and it's Tekken just straight-up called Street Fighter Six. It's not a V. Like, it was Street Fighter Five with, like, a V. So some people didn't know if it was, like, canonically a Roman numeral or the number five, you know? And as a YouTuber, that was annoying because I wasn't sure which would get more views to put the V, which is accurate, or the five because people just like to count. So, like, the number number five might get more search results. I didn't know. So I like how if it's Mortal Kombat 12 or Street Fighter Six, I know exactly what to put in the title, and there's no guessing required, which is very nice. I appreciate that. I have a question for you Mortal Kombat per professionals, because I'm going to make my MK9 Sucks video eventually. Should I title it Mortal Kombat 9 Sucks, or should I title it Mortal Kombat 2011 Sucks? I'll ask Snake on this, because I always call it Mortal Kombat 9 in my videos, like when I talk about it, mm -hmm. but I've never had to title a video like MK9, so I don't know. That's kind of true. Usually, yeah, okay. But with me, I used to call it, I always call it 2011, but then um, around the time I started doing the MK11 critique, I, I, I felt like 11, 2011, there was too much of like a, a an overlap there. Ah. So that's, that's why I started I started calling it MK9, but like for the longest time, I, I didn't call it MK9 because it wasn't MK9. I think even... I think even uh, in fact, Ed Boon might have done something like that. Or he called it, he called that one nine, but then said X is not ten; it's X or something to that effect. So that's so stupid. It's obviously <sighs> ten now because we got eleven. <laughs> um, yeah. So Sonic, honestly, you could just go like straight up clickbait and just call it Mortal Kombat sucks because that the name is of the, the game title. is technically just Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Yeah. So you could just call title. it that, and then you'll get. You won't only get your existing viewers, which are good, loyal viewers, but you're going to get some outside people now who think that you're challenging their game. Like, how dare he say <laughs> Mortal Kombat sucks? Then I'm... they come in and hear the robot voice and immediately know that it's like tongue-in-cheek gag fun. What, what's yeah. that? Mortal Kombat Shang Tsung sucks? How dare you? How dare you carry Hiroyuki legacy I'm... or something? <laughs> I'm sorry. What I mean, is that? What? I mean, you... you, you, you... I mean, you, you say that, dog, but you have to consider uh, there are a lot of people in this fandom who are very, very dumb. <laughs> so where you can say something explicitly and they will think you're saying the opposite. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can clarify to make sure no, you, can, you think, I'm going to say this, I'm going to clarify it. No one can possibly misunderstand what I'm saying and they fucking will. I oh, don't yeah. know how it happens, oh, yeah. but it does. So, I mean, it's not just MK. I mean, I'm, like when I did my last video on the Resident Evil movies, uh. I said this. You know, the, the issue the issue here isn't isn't like 
this thing or this thing or random race changes. It's this thing. And someone says, oh, you think the, you think the movies are bad because of race changes? Like, I, I said that racist, wasn't the issue. You fucking fool. Typical racist You cretinous snake. dipshit. Listen, Snake, I people. have oh, probably... Oh, 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 oh. I have a... If we have time... Or, if we have time, I want to get into that. But there was this guy who was trying to make me out, <laughs> trying to call me racist on Twitter uh, yeah. because of the, whole, of the whole Jack's ending thing. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd like to get into that if we have time. Or I mean, like any any, yeah, any other future yeah. topic too, because that's a long time I ago too. To, say, to be like, sure, that's relevant. What you're saying right now, Snake, because we're talking about the MK12 leak, right? Uh-huh. Somebody managed hmm. to do what you just said, just to be dumb, like beyond what I can even comprehend. Okay, because in I my video about. talking about how Mortal Kombat 12 is confirmed. Within the first seven seconds, I show what proves that Mortal Kombat 12 is next. And I still get a comment saying, I don't think it's going to be MK12 next. I think it's going to be blank. And I'm like, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> like it says in the first seven, like maybe even five seconds, it has the actual like audio of them saying that MK12 is the next game which by the way wb please don't take down that video i'm scared because some people who covered it did not include that footage and i'm worried that because i actually include the oh no footage i might get the video taken down please don't do that to me i will be very sad please keep being giga chads and don't take down leakers because you never really have before so please don't take down this video i'd be very sad it was performing pretty well uh <laughs> dog actually it's just speculation i mean maybe that guy just misspoke i don't think it's true I'm sorry. Even even though Ed Maybe Boom just the made a CEO funny tweet, of Warner Brothers Discovery misspoke. Yes, <laughs> even I've though heard Ed it's Boom the actual CEO, <laughs> I could be wrong about that. <laughs> Can someone clarify? Maybe Snake does more research than me usually, so maybe you know more <laughs> about this. But that that stream where he said that was that any legal stream? Did someone stream that without their permission or record without permission, or was that like public and anyone could have seen that? Probably his interview, right? I have no idea. I was no an earnings idea. call. I, 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 so, so I, I would have imagined it's probably not just because of the the nature of what it was, but I, I don't know how this stuff works. So it, it could well have been a, a public thing, but I, I I I feel like it probably wouldn't have been. That's fair. Think that's how so? I feel too, unfortunately. Think it's a leak then? Because I, I feel like because like the video itself does not have a lot of views, and it's like there wasn't there a chat there too actually for that video. Well, somebody was well, streaming well, it, but the theory that I, someone said that like the guy streaming it is not actually on the call. He was like recording the call, like the earnings call on stream. And like, so he might be like an illegal, like how that one guy streamed the Super Bowl recently, which is also super illegal. Oh, yeah. This guy like streamed um, like this earnings call possibly. And that could be what actually happened. But someone just straight up said the name of the game, which is funny because I've known for a while, I was like 90% sure it's going to be Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. But then when we kept not getting it, I wasn't sure because I was like, <laughs> we still haven't gotten anything. And like, I know they've been playtesting it for a while, I think. And, like, that's just what I've heard. And I, I think also, like, there's people in the comments now who I think are full of shit. But people in my comments are now claiming to be testers on the game. Oh, okay, And they're like, sure. I can't say too much. I still have an NDA. But please ask me your questions. I'll answer anything I can. <laughs> and they're in my comments section, like, asking that shit. Which, hey, it'll just drive my... Um, my views up because they're oh, gonna like want to reply to Wait, them. People and stuff, actually and, like, reply to those. Discussion. <laughs> Maybe. Also, what's really funny? You brought up like the ten minute videos you saw about the leak and all that. I know for a fact there is someone on some forum online somewhere who is pissed that I took that like seven second audio leak and did in fact make a 10 minute video out of it <laughs> but it's because i actually don't even like i cover a lot of stuff not just yeah, that, yeah you um, cover it yeah. definitely have more coverage to it too and in fact guess what guys i actually know the exact month they were going to get the reveal trailer because they mentioned that too in the earnings call but no one's talking about it <laughs> wait seriously this i don't oh wow yeah wait 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 wow really they mentioned they mentioned what month they're going to reveal all like have a, a reveal or at least a showcase of all of those games and they like mentioned what month it's going to be in not the actual event i don't think but they mentioned like what month and the exact day even they're going to reveal at the start of the earnings call and then later towards the end they say the games but it's implied that those games that they just mentioned at the end are also going to be at that um that showcase so it's kind of funny supposedly from what i've learned we're going to get in april the mortal Kombat 12 okay. uh, trailer. so it's pretty soon like only like a month away so that's yeah. pretty exciting Funny thing is, I predicted like the game would come out earliest August and latest like late this year, like November or December. So if it if the trailer comes out April, possibly August then actually for that game. 
To be fair, I could still be wrong and right, where they reveal it sooner, but then at that showcase, there's still a trailer of some kind. Like, they reveal it sooner, but then in, like, the April showcase, there's another trailer or something, right? Um, and then at EVO, well, like, like, there's like, another one. Like, like a cinematic trailer, and then they do, like, the proper, here's the gameplay debut. Yeah. Hopefully Sub-Zero I really wins hope they time. do another big... <laughs> I think he will. I think yeah, we got good, good hopes for my boy Sub-Zero. I'd put money on him. I think we got a chance of Sub-Zero <laughs> winning. I will it's take that match. If, here's the thing. I, I think if uh, we are following on from the end of the Liu Kang ending for Aftermath, I think he'll probably be like Liu Kang fighting the new villain and he'll probably like summon Scorpion and like a couple of other characters okay. to help him out. <laughs> That'd be Liu Kang's not going to be more playable. Liu Kang, almost, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 I mean, if it is a follow-up to that game, he has to be in the story. Oh, he will. He has to show up somewhere. But I bet he won't be playable because he's way too... Uh, well, I guess... Well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> or maybe just be a Raiden. It would be actually, like... It would be super... I, by the way, I would not have been this confident that Sub-Zero could win if not for the fact that Scorpion's already died in one of the um, Versus trailers. He still technically to, wins because OG Scorpion shows up. Yeah, to be fair, they both die. die right, they both die. So that's why they can do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think what could be really cool, and I'd be, I'm not gonna be right about this, but it would be the best possible reveal, I think, is if like Sub-Zero shows up, but it's like the prequel, so it's like a different version of Sub-Zero we've never uh -huh. seen before. Yeah. And maybe he's fighting some like 3D era character or an Adenian or something, and it ends with him killing them and like a badass, like, like blah, blows her head up or something, right? But then like behind him is like an orange glow, and he just turns around and sees Fire God Luke Kang just levitating there, and then it just shows the logo, and it's like MK12, and it's like oh shit, <laughs> Luke oh. Kang coming to get revenge on like whatever monk character that like Die. Evil Sub Zero just killed. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, like that'd be really sick. I don't know if you mentioned this in your video, uh, Snake, but like I, I kind of mentioned like if this was a prequel, I think the Sub Zero of the game would be the original Cryomancer who passed down like the like the ice abilities through the, the Lin Kuei and stuff. Mm. I think that would be kinda interesting to like deep dive because we know nothing about this Cryomancer other yeah. than that he banged the human woman and yeah. that's it. <laughs> and it'd be interesting because it's genetic, right? Like you can pass it down. It's yeah. not something you learn. Like you're born with Cryomancy or not, I think. So yeah. it would be interesting yeah, it's, it's, if a sorcerer it's a, it's a made racial trait. Hmm? Um it's a racial yeah, trait. Yeah, yeah. Because they are the cryomancer people. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah. they're Adinian, but they got casted, they're outcasted on the outworld, I think. If the... uh, uh, well, I, I think the I think the idea is that they got exiled. Well, they, they're either, either they were exiled. Yes, they were exiled to outworld by Sindel pr prior to her showing her true colors by killing Jared. Mm. And then they, they were in outworld, and then Khan drove them to extinction. Except a few of them managed to escape to Earth Realm, to Arctica, I, I assume, and then the bloodlines continued until they reached Sub Zero, Sub Zero, and Frost. Yeah, I love that. That means Sub Zero is kind of like Goku in the Mortal Kombat universe because in this like metaphor, Shao Kahn is like Frieza, and he's like these cryomancers. I feel like if one of them is exceptionally strong, could actually fuck up my shit. So let's just kill all these ice bending motherfuckers because they're actually a threat. And then like ah, let's run away to a different planet, aka. Earth Realm, and that's where Sub Zero like <laughs> lives. And thanks for the longest time, he's an Earth Realmer. But then in Deception, discovers like their ancient armor, and he's like, oh, "My people are actually like from a different world." So he's very much like the Goku of Mortal Kombat, <laughs> discovering his Saiyan lineage. Um. So, what else do you guys want to say about MK12 with this a little little? What brief... I want in it that could be a fun topic. We each talk about what we want. So. There are Fair three enough. things let's that I want. Let's keep it short, because I'm pretty sure we've Very short. mentioned yeah. this many times. But yeah, let's, let's talk about something we want. This is new. I never mentioned this before. So, <laughs> and someone, I'm stealing it from a YouTuber that I love very much. I love this channel. It's super underrated. Um, he nice. makes great content, amazing voice. His name is The Fighter's Den. So there's a shout out. He makes really good stuff. And he's funny. Like, he can just talk. And, like, he hooks you in. There's not even much editing to his voice to kill the dead air. Like, you just are hanging on every word because he's just so good at talking. Nice. And what he says is, and I agree, we want to finally fucking see what Natara's world looks like. We've heard about Natara's oh. realm. We've never seen it. <laughs> can we finally see that? Even if Natara's not in the game, can we at least go to the vampire realm or see what it looks like? <laughs> as much as that... That's, that, that's why you got to read... That's why you have to read my fanfics, because I did that. Hey, nice, <laughs> nice. Oh, as much as that'd be awesome, they're not going to do that, because that's way too much commitment for something that's no. that's from uh, the Midway era. Uh, too much effort, too much effort. We can we era, have era. returning characters, okay. but a whole entire okay, well, realm. Uh. Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I could imagine them doing, like, one level where it's basically, like, 
picture the sea of blood stage, like where you're on the shore, but it's raining blood. Yeah. And like that'd be one stage. The characters would go there for like one scene, uh, encounter Natara, and leave. That's enough. That and is that would be actually. It. Fu- I'm totally down for that. That would be just enough. Yeah. For lore and all that kind of stuff. Even just a stage could be fun. And like I told my friend, um, I think it would make the perfect um, stage for that. Don't just go like all horror movie with it. Instead, make it seem like a place that people actually live, but where there would be water, it's just blood. So ah. it could be like a nice castle. And in the center is like a big water fountain, very similar to what you'd have on Earth, like a pretty Greek style sculpture water fountain, but it's just blood. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it still looks like a regular place, but just there's blood where water would be, would be super interesting. Um, oh, oh, you, you know, you know the image of like uh, the the monk like uh, like, sat, uh, like sat meditating under a waterfall. It's a vampire, and all the water's blue. That's cute. That'd I like that. Sick. Yeah, that that'd be great. Like gargoyles that have like blood coming out of their mouth because water actually runs out of gargoyles in um, church architecture. So that could be really mm-hmm. cool. Just simple stuff like that. I don't want them to go to, like. I think it's more interesting when it's like people actually live here, not just like oh we made a stage and like that's it. You know. Um, one more thing I want to see. Don't forget, Brain, don't forget. I want to actually see Edenia. I feel like we haven't actually seen okay, Edenia in okay. any considerable measure. We have not. We've seen the inside of Sindel's castle, like in MK11 wait, Aftermath, where she's like in her throne room, and that's it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Are you saying... Well, well, that's, I, not, well, that's, that's an that, outworld, that's, right? That's an outworld. Cause, 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 Isn't outworld also Edenia, still... though? Aren't they merged? Eh... Uh, Kinda. Yeah, well, I, imagine, I, I imagine that was meant to be like Khan's fortress. Yeah, yeah. Where I see, it would have been, I see. So you want, would okay, be. so even before that. Gotcha. We got like pre-outworld yeah, the, invasion Edenia. The, even the, better. The, the only Edenia stages in the entire series are the Edenian ruins and the pyramid from Armageddon. Oh, that's in Edenia. The, okay. Uh, the the uh, conquest focus ones for conquest mode, like in Deception and Armageddon. There's a few of those, and debatably, um, depending on how you look at it, the desert from MK9 with the Sindel statue could be Edenia or it could be Earthrealm. Okay. So, okay. so really, when you boil it down, when you boil it down, it's like two or three. I mean, technically. When MK4 came out, Edenia was Outworlds, and it's just a different name. So, like, Living Forest technically was Edenia, maybe. But oh. Oh. very cool. It, it's it's okay. but but when you when you look at Edenia for what it is now in the modern series, there's like two stages. I yeah. I think just like game. pushing more Edenia lore in the new game would be fantastic because Edenia is yeah. only a tragedy story, but there's so many Edenia characters, and it's just like that's it. That's all we're gonna get from them, basically. Yeah. Just yeah, just do that yeah. totally. And I'm calling it now, money like, now Ad- on the table. I think that Adenia is just going to look like what the High Elves Society looks like in Lord of the Rings yeah. movies. It's just gonna be fantasy, white marble everywhere, like big pillars and trees mixed in and waterfalls I mean, everywhere. Is that what it looks like in the arcade? <laughs> but that's kind of what it. Pretty much. Well, that's what it, it looks like. like Deception in Conquest mode. It was basically that. Yeah. Then that. Then I they never have played to go Conquest that. mode, so haha, it's new to me. I mean, Adenia is in Conquest mode, so you can but, see all um, that there. Like, if you want uh, I said it before, but I'm such a New Age fan. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. But I'm a very New Age fan. Like, I didn't really hook on to Mortal Kombat until the reboot with NetherRealm Games, and I did all the research, so I know all the info, but I didn't actually experience, like, a lot of the stuff. I played Deadly Alliance and Deception, but I don't think I played Conquest mode. I would just play with the boys, you know, pick Kenshi, you know, just be a shithead. Like, I would do <laughs> stuff like that, but I didn't actually... I played some Conquest mode for um, Armageddon, whatever that mode's called. It's, um, it is, is it conquest mode still in Armageddon? Okay. Yeah, but there's fighting. I don't think I don't think the original conquest mode has fighting outside of the training mode and stuff that you do with Chujinko. Yeah. Well, what deception. it was, what what, 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 yeah, what it was was Deception was basically taking Dead Alliance's tutorial mode and making like a, a little RPG thing. That's why they're still training with various characters and why you use other characters' move sets instead of just using Chujinkos. But then in between Deception and Armageddon with Shaolin Monks. So oh. they clearly wants to make it a bit more Shaolin Monks-ish. So the approach in Armageddon is, it's like a Shaolin Monks-ish gameplay style, but then when you fight a boss, it's normal gameplay. Ah, okay. Nice. Okay. Makes sense. It's kind of shocking when you consider how little representation Edenia gets, how little focus, when other than Earthrealm and Outworld, it's the most represented realm in terms of character numbers. Yeah. Yeah? That's the... Uh... So we many, ha- we ha- we especially have so in the many new characters. games, because like Netherrealm gets almost no representation. Ah. We have like Scorpion, Quan Chi, and Shinnok, and that's like it. Whereas before we had Dramen and like some other characters that came. Serena from, like, the wasn't a cutscene in MKX. Yeah, Serena, <laughs> and we had ah. also Meat is technically no Meat's a flesh bit character. Never mind. We have uh, um, we have all the revenants. Moloch. <laughs> 
<laughs> there you go. Yeah, Mol- Moloch's a Edith. demon, right? So Moloch is Nether Realm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Well, yes. What I said was we I would have love the Revenants. To come back. You know, they're they're technically the Revenants. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will commend them for creating a way to have you fight the good guys and not just beat up the same two villains over and over again, which is definitely why they created the Revenants. But at the same time, <laughs> three, it's games. <laughs> three games. Three games. I thought occurs. <laughs> You know, a thought occurs, if the Revenants don't count, then neither does Scorpion and Noob, because they're from Earthrealm originally. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. They don't play as Earthrealm Scorpion, though. Like, really. So I guess that's, like, my argument for that. <laughs> I guess it, it, Hanzo is way too representing another realm, so I, I kind of get what that means. But yeah, like like you just that's, said that's about... still technically undead Scorpion, though. He just, like, gets better. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was I did have a similar situation with you, dog, like... My start was MK9, so it's like I also worked my way backwards to understanding the the OGs yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, I recommend it. It's fun. I recommend uh, oh, for the sure, reverse yeah. engineering of being a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you you're a bitter posers, old man I... like Snake. <laughs> <laughs> I was here a decade for you two, you you posers, you you, you, you whippersnappers. You Listen, I played the, the classic games, all right? <laughs> Here's my experience of the old games, all right? I played mk3 in the arcades as a kid was having a really good time until i got to like a harder difficulty enemy and it was jacks on the acid pit not only did i lose but he uppercutted me into the acid pit i turned into a skeleton i was a kid i didn't want to play anymore because my character got just eviscerated in front of me <laughs> so i was like i'm gonna play a different game now and i just i wasn't sad it's kind of like well i got about as beaten as I, wait, badly as wait, i possibly could wait, so i'm just so gonna go to a different game <laughs> do, do you remember what character you were playing as it was probably Sub Zero or some shit, but I really don't remember. In fact, the arcade because game might have been so jank that I couldn't even pick the character I wanted because the stick didn't work well. Uh. So I probably got stuck <laughs> with the wrong character, like knowing how like that that works. But <laughs> my my head canon is that it was Reptile, and that when when Kung Lao and Jax just randomly talking MK11 about giving Reptile an acid bath, that's what they were talking. There about. There it is. You're the lore person there, Trinidad Dog. Look at that. <laughs> You're the creation of that <laughs> intro dialogue. <laughs> Well, here we have the age-old question then. Like, can you burn a dragon with fire? Can you kill a reptile with acid? Or is he immune since it comes from his body? Well, you can if it's if it's in I'm... the stage fatality, so... <laughs> well, I just meant, like, lore-wise. Could you technically kill reptile we... with acid? Because... Don't know. Well, actually... Yeah. Technically speaking... I would assume so. I'd assume I... so, too, because we actually have acid in us. Believe it or not, you, viewer, have acid in you right now. It's in your stomach. But because your stomach lining has a special chemical composition, it doesn't get destroyed by the acid in your stomach, much like plastic cannot be destroyed by acid. You have a weird kind of plasticky lining in your stomach, and also your stomach remakes that like every 24 hours. So your stomach is actually constantly playing a survival horror game <laughs> against the acid inside your stomach so it doesn't fucking die, just <laughs> so you know. And that acid is actually so strong that it can get up in your esophagus and give you what's called heartbore- heartburn. So it can actually burn you through your esophagus despite the fact that your esophagus also has some of that lining so my my point is this i tend reptile to forget is that likely you're a only immune. <laughs> yes um, <laughs> reptile likely is only immune to acid in that one spot of his body where he generates it is my point whereas well, outside he's I, probably burnable i have a i have a suggestion for that so i bet i mean because i don't think they'll do this but i bet if say there is a scene where reptile actually gets thrown into the acid i bet like then it will be the same situation with how Noob Saba get got like shot into the soul NATO, and like then it'll be like, mm-hmm. uh, Quan Chi's creations get, don't die easily, or some some bullshit like that would be explained for why Reptile could survive in that. <laughs> Can you imagine how amazing it would be if like in story mode there's a scene where Reptile's actually good, but then like he gets like kicked into the acid pit by a villain and you think he's dead but then just his tongue comes out and wraps around the villain's leg <laughs> and just drags him like no 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 ah, they get oh, pulled into the fucking acid pit be so sick dude. and then Another he comes rep. out carrying their skull or some shit like eat shit <laughs> make reptile playable in the story mode for one chapter <gasps> do it you cowards <laughs> but hey if reptile is immune to the acid that doesn't mean his clothes are <laughs> he comes out and he's like <laughs> It can be how, done well. It can be done like, how do we do this? He is the one still swinging. Tail still swinging. 
That would be cool too. If like when he's knocked into the acid pit, he comes out as his lizard self. But until then, he was like the human. Oh, uh, the human version, disguise. Yes, yes, yes. You know yes, what? That yes. does sound That'd pretty be good. sick. And he's still See, we're be too naked. good. Like we're, we're too above the level awesome. of these writers. I'm sorry. It has to be said. <laughs> Do you, well, okay. you can make a lizard man naked and not make it weird. Like like lizard was naked in the Spider Man movie, and it was of course, fine. Of like course, no one yeah. said anything. He was naked in 2021. So yeah. Oh, that's true. Cool. That, that's an interesting thing that I'm kind of wondering. Do you think this is going to be uh, reptilian, reptile all the way like he was in MKX? Or do you think it's going to be like human, but when he takes this off, it's the lizard head like in the classic MKX or, or his classic MK9 costume and stuff like that? I think they'll just stick with uh, what they've got in MKX just because yeah. the reason they went with that direction with him was to make him distinct from the other ninjas. Mm. So it's like how Ermac kind of... Uh, Kept st 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 having that uh, leather straps around his head from Deception. Like, he still had that into MK9. Yeah. And then they went with the, the Space Wizard look. Black so, strap. they want to make him look different. So, like, you're not going to see Ermac go back to his original mask. Uh, probably won't even go back away from Space Wizard at this point. He's probably going to stay decrepit. Uh, <laughs> and I think Ermac is going to, uh, Reptile rather, is going to stay like that. I mean, Noob's always black skinned now, whereas in like, Deception, he, he, he wasn't for his default costume. Mm. So, that could change. But now it's a way of, like, making him distinct from the other characters. Very bold of you to uh, assume that Noob Cybot's coming back. I can almost guarantee he's not. <laughs> almost, yeah. Oh, he he will he he will at some point. Of course, yeah. But in this game, I doubt I doubt it. But he he will come back. Oh, he'll he'll, he'll be back in the next twenty twenty one movie. He'll be back for that. Like Behan. Yeah, I, I, re I reckon he will. Just just because people like Sub Zero in that movie that is so true. much, and yeah. it's just a convenient it's such a convenient way to bring him back, and it's also an opportunity for the actor to do like different stunts where he'd be using different powers. And he's going to be able to play quietly too. I think. Uh, I wish to answer the question. I think that Reptile is going to look like his Deception version and also what he is in Shaolin Monks because I have a oh, feeling oh, 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 oh. they're going to lean hard into 3D era in this game. I think they're going to lean hard into that kind of vibe. So I think they're going to bring that back. So I think he's going to look mostly ninja, but he's still going to have like the reptile feet maybe and even like the uh, the, the the slit in the mask where you can still like like tongue and shit. Yeah, so uh, Dog, it's actually Armageddon. He's, he doesn't, he's not like that in Deception. Fuck you. He's not in Deception. <laughs> he's in Conquest mode, though, at least. But, but that design <laughs> right, you're mentioning is Armageddon and Shaolin Monks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so in Deception, he doesn't have the uh, Shaolin Monks look? In he Deception, still has, like, he's... Deadly Alliance? He's, like, regular well, ninja well, green. Well, Sha Shaolin Monks... Oh, he's just green. Shaolin oh. Monks was a year out... Shaolin Monks came out a year after Deception. Uh -huh. So... So when, when he shows him in Conquest mode, you actually see him in his classic like, yeah. MK2 yeah. ninja look. C cut that part then out. Then when he... <laughs> When he, appears, <laughs> when he appears in the dark prison, he actually can appear in the MK4 version. Ah, oh, that's right. He turns more lizardy. And when you see him cameo in Sindel's ending, uh, it's, it's the MK2 version again. You just see his legs. Yeah. And then Shallow Monks came out. Then people really liked that design. And so it made its way over to Armageddon. And I think that was a fan request because when you look at the first po um, wallpaper with all the characters, it's Deadly Alliance Reptile. Mm -hmm. ah. But then when they did the later version of the final game, it's Shaolin Monk. So I think fans looked at that and said, I want the Shaolin Monk's version. And that was like the one uh, model that they had an excuse not to make because every other model was from the 3D... From Any character who had a costume in the 3D era, they just used that model. Mm -hmm. But Reptile reptile specifically got a brand new model based on Shaolin Monks. Nice. So, just use that one. <laughs> so I, I, I imagine it must have been fan requests and they're like, yeah, we're going to do that for one character. And actually, I say if I'm not mistaken, he has an elitist. both of his design in the 3D era. I mean, in Armageddon. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he has his uh, Deadly Alliance primary as his alternate, while the, dis the alternate from Deadly Alliance is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fucking love that we got the Deadly Alliance at some point. Everyone looks back on it and hates it, but it's aged like fine wine because it's the only <laughs> game where you can find him fully realized like as a lizard monster. <laughs> I think that... I'm not an elitist. I don't think the reptile has to be a ninja. Some people feel that way. I like how he looks in MKX. I think it's completely fine. And well, I even love that he has the um, the bone accessories on the outfit because it implies like he's from that Jurassic era, which he is. He's raptor people. So I like that idea. Yeah, I find awesome. it interesting. I, I love that costume too, yeah. But I mean, to be fair, that's still... I'm also not against Ermac being a mage. I think it's fine. Like, I didn't like it at first, but like Snake said, if it makes him more distinct from the other ninjas, and like now in the future, like 10 years from now, if Mortal Kombat's still around, people will associate the characters not just with their color, but also with their theme. And I like the idea of that. Like, Reptile is going to be known as like the prehistoric looking character, not just the green ninja. And then Ermac will be known as the mage, not just Red Boy. 
Like, I'm okay with that. I like the idea of them having more than just their color. And the oh, reason I care so passionately about that is because I'm actually currently scripting a video about that, about how uh, they're pretty much just their color, which is a blessing and a curse as a designer. Because on the one hand, do whatever you want. Like, Rain can theoretically be anything, as long as he's purple. But at the same time, he has no identity outside of purple. <laughs> so, I, I must say, I, I love the how the how these characters grow throughout the franchise in terms of their designs because there's like a great comparison picture of like all the classic ninjas doing their classic clothes and all look the same. And now you look at them today, and it's like, oh, this is what Smoke looks like now. This is what like Reptile looks like now. This is what Ermac. And it's like all very distinctly different. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I really enjoy seeing yeah. like how they're depicted now yeah, in these sort of ways. I think how Rain was made like South Asian or Indian is really clever. I think his like like uh, his yeah. weapons and stuff being like that is really clever. I like it. It makes him more distinct, and it kind of fits with the theme that Edenia has always been kind of like a weird mix of Asia and also Egypt, depending on which game we're talking about. Uh -huh. Because originally it was definitely meant to be Asia, because like Katana is Katana and Shao Kahn is is Genghis Khan or Shokan. Yeah, so yeah. clearly it was originally just Asia, but then like it became kind of like Egypt at one point with like their jewelry and accessories and shit. Um, so it's a mix, and I like the idea that he fits perfectly with like the South um, Asian looking like Indian design, which is cool. Okay, so MK12 requests. Who wants to go? In are, are you done with that trainer dog? Or because uh, I'm done. I, I snake shared too. It wasn't just me. <laughs> I, I, I threw in some things too, but I meant like yeah. So like, uh, who should go next for like MK12? Uh, well, well, with me, I've already done like a whole video on how I would approach MK12, like how I would use the variation system uh, to have a, a larger roster. Mm. So uh, the way Tribal was handled with the representing four Cyber Ninjas, it would literally be those four characters using those variations for the uh, to have a larger roster. Yeah. Uh, but so I basically picture MK MKX's uh, roster with the three variations each, but then then you have a roster that's three times the size of MKX through that variation system. Uh, cool. Some people think that's, that's a cool idea. Some people are uh, just got angry about it for some reason. Uh, say it's unfeasible, but I don't think yeah, it I is. Think it's a, some people said it's, it's a really cool idea. I think it's a great idea. But at the same uh, time, like I would imagine that you would have like very similar characters. Like Liu Kang and Kung Lao might be the same character, but then there are different variations. It's like, oh, Kung Lao has the hat. Liu Kang has yeah, that I mean, kind I mean, of a thing, right? Yeah, some characters, some characters would be, well, some more important characters might be more distinct. And the, uh, one of the ideas is that over time, some more moves will be added to the, each character to, to make them different. Ooh. But like, the way I look at it is, some people would say, well, they don't, they all, they, they, so Sub Zero's got the same moveset as, say, Smoke, because he's got the Lin Kuei style. Well, he doesn't play like Sub Zero anymore. It's like, well, Sub Zero in MK9 doesn't play like Sub Zero from MKX or 11. The characters are always playing differently in every game. So, the way I look at it, it doesn't matter. You can just do. It's not like Tekken or Soul Calibur where they try and keep the same file fighting style across each game. It changes all the time, oh, yeah. so that isn't really an argument anymore. Mm. So yeah. I, so yeah, that, that's that's the way I would approach it. Of course, my approach would also be a full reboot that re tries to retell oh, the whole yeah. story over oh, multiple yeah. years. That's that's not going to happen. <laughs> I think the I think the best we can hope for really is that we get something new. We get some focus on other realms. That's not just the same three. Ideally, I mean, Outworld has to be here because it's like the start of a new timeline. Outworld has to be a big force. Hopefully, we do that. And then Outworld can sit out, for the most part, one or two games in this new in this new series. And we can focus on other realms like Edenia. Netherrealm, honestly, being the realm of the dead, should be completely irrelevant unless the main villain is from the Netherrealm. Yeah. Maybe some Chaos and Order Realm could be also nice to have. Well, yeah, Revenant Liu Kang was a very big deal. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was a, a cool deal when people thought about him actually being a threat because he's supposed to be like, lore-wise, he's like leagues better than most of the fighters. So the idea of him being a villain is really scary until you learn that like they're all jobber status because they're like yep. failed copies of the original. <laughs> um, I think will be cool. So Ed Boon did hint at this, but we're probably not going to get it based on some inside info that I have. But... Someone referenced, like, bringing back the 3D era games, but with a new fresh coat of paint, or even, like, making just one game that plays, like, the 3D era games, but with all the spit and polish of, like, a AAA game. And uh -huh. he went, I'm not interested in that, but what about those games, but in 2D? So it could be possible that in MK12, they can switch stances mid-fight, like how they could in um, Deadly Alliance. Like, they'll be able to, like, do a combo and then switch into sword stance oh, and, like, stances. keep the combo going okay, and okay. stuff. <laughs> that is possible. So they'll, they'll keep the variation system, but it's going to be real time, and you can switch into, like, different movesets, like, mid-fight. That would be cool, but they got to be careful. 
Because that would be a lot of fucking attack. So they gotta like shrink down each variation's moves, I think, so it's like not too fucking oversaturated. Uh huh. Uh -huh. But you know, you know, you know, you know, it'd be really cool that idea. Hmm. Triborg. Oh. If you could switch on the fly, oh. that would be so good. He even changed his color smoke, like nano right? style in an Iron Man's suit. Because in the 3D era, there was like yeah. there were two characters as one, right? Noob Saiba and Smoke, something like he that. He just teleports. Yeah. yeah, poof. That confused the fuck out of me as a kid, by the way, because <laughs> I didn't get the lore behind that. I thought that like he was somehow one person. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> like, it's a Ferritor situation. <laughs> um, yeah, I was I confused by what your commentary on dog because I thought, have you guys played or have you heard of uh, shoot, I forgot what it's called, but it's like the Pokemon version of Tekken. Po po Pokin? Is that what it's called? I forgot. Pokin. Okay. Have you guys ever played that, or have you guys ever heard about that? Mm -hmm. Briefly. Because in that game, literally, you play, it's a 3D game, and a 3D fighter game, but every time you do a combo, or every time you do an action, the game will then turn 2D. So the game is tech literally just 3D fighter, and then combo into 2D, and then combo into 3D fighting again. Constantly, constantly, constantly throughout the game. Yeah, that was what I thought you were referring to when you said like, "Oh, changing stances." Like, oh, so Mortal Kombat turning into yeah. a two D game and then into the three D game or something. <laughs> That'd be cool, but no, I think what you're describing is an anime fighter, like when they move around like that. But then when you start landing hits, it switches to side because even the Naruto oh no, literally, games, Pokemon like, do is that. like it turns into a two D fighter. Like when you get into that stance, it's like you cannot move like this way it's like it's oh, like this now weird i didn't yeah, know that i've seen gameplay but i never knew you could like force the 2d spectrum it's a very weird or the, mechanic or two and a half d as it's called be specific <laughs> two and a half d two at 2.5 d and the yeah you, you can look at yeah, yeah. it's See, it's a very interesting that, that's that's actual that's actual 2.5 d as opposed to if the game has 3d graphics and 2d gameplay yeah therefore it's 2.5 d combat 4 is a 3d era game guys <laughs> i'm controversial <laughs> it has side steps i think or does it not does it not? I can't remember. Does MK4 have an option to like so. rotate around the person or not? I don't think so, actually. I don't think so. Yeah. I know you can knock the I know you can knock the point into the background or into the foreground, but I don't think you can freely okay. rotate. So what I'm thinking of then is just that like depending on the attack you do, it rotates the camera a little bit, maybe off axis. Because I feel like it's possible to like see the entire stage. You're not just forced to look at the same wall. Um, but I could be completely wrong about that. Mm. But I do remember it being mostly 2D. And also, Tanya was broken as hell. I know that for a fact, too. Hey, hey. <laughs> uh, I want that costume to come back. Her stupid superhero costume. I want it to come back. I like it. <laughs> I mean, the outfit's basically M MK2 female ninja without the mask and with like the more of a chest showing. Yeah, I just ah. thought it's like Wonder Woman's outfit. She has like a sweetheart swimsuit on. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you ever noticed this, but if you look at the, if you look at the characters who were brought back for MK Gold, like... Uh, most of them just have their MK3 looks. Like, Katana's just the MK3 without the mask. Kung Lao, uh, Sector, Cyrax is just the MK3 ones. Melina and Baraka get new ones, but the rest just recycle all designs. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, should we next talk about Street Fighter Six real quick? Did everyone watch that trailer? I didn't say what I one? wanted for yo, MK12. Ca ca yeah. Yo, Kami. Yeah, but no one cares. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like it. I think it was pretty cool. And, like, we had stuff we brought up, like how Cammy's ass crack is covered by her hand in the victory I have pose, a set so I wanted like... MK12 yet. <laughs> we're still talking about MK12? No, I, I we were haven't done. Said we were talking wanted... about, like... Oh. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you legit just completely ignored me. But wait, it was Snake done yet, though? Cause, see, cause... So, see, see, see that, that, that's how I, I often feel when, when, when I get ignored. We just move on. Oh, Oh no! Just like me. Just like has, me. Has this happened? I'm ha sorry. Has, <laughs> has it happened to dog yet? Has this happened to dog? It will be just bullying and just try and move <laughs> on. <laughs> Believe it or not, the weird part is I'm holding back. Like I'm really trying not to talk over people, and I'm really trying to let everyone talk, and it still happens. This is me with like the restrictions on, and I'm still doing it by accident. Fuck. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I I I, Go I got. I'll just stare at Ivy's ass. But are you are you by the way snake? Is that is that all you got to say or? Um... Yeah. Okay. I I I don't have too much to say. I also made an MK12 prediction video, but that one's much more like fan fiction angle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fan fiction like angles of like what I would like to see or like how I want to see how the series can progress into crazy directions and stuff like that. Um, but in terms of what I would like to see, like just want in the game, uh, obviously I don't need to see reptile because that's gonna happen. Um, but. Uh, I'll take a bit of a note from Dog here, because you said, oh, I want to see the Vampiric Realm. Oh, I want to see Adenia and stuff like that. 
because we're totally getting havoc i want to see chaos realm i want to see how they would depict that in a modern setting or like how how weird and crazy the background of that stage could look and, and that kind of stuff i think that would be kind of fun yeah you know yeah you know mm-hmm. you know i if, if i was going to put money down on one 3d era character being in this game it would oh, be for havoc. sure oh for sure he's like he was in the comics he was teased in MK11 in the story mode, and like um, a lot of fans want him. A lot of people have been asking for him for like like most of the time when you see like these mock-ups or leaks of uh, oh here's what the next combat pack's going to be. Havoc was like the most probably the most constant one other than like maybe Molina. Uh, yeah. like, people really wanted Havoc in Havoc. it, which is kind of surprising considering he's a 3D era character. And a lot of, a lot of the modern fans don't like that stuff. For some reason, but I, I, I blank as a blanket thing, but pe- Havoc's like Kenshi, where people just really started to. Well, Ke- Kenshi was a hit instantly. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, there's a reason he was one of the six 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 deadly alliance characters to come back in Deception, but Havoc is one where people have grown, uh, wa- uh, warmed up to him over time. I wonder how much of that is the comic. Like, if he makes it into this game, do we have to thank Sean Kittleson for putting him in the comic? I think it's just the idea of Havoc that people like, or the design, like just this character. Who's it's like bold. half school? He half... looks very Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Ah. So, with, with the design, do you think they would go more with, uh, basic more on the original design that that we see in the comic or in Deception, or the way he appeared in Noob's MK9 ending? Ooh, I kind of forgot how he appeared in Noob's MK9 ending. Let me look this up. It's very si- it's very similar, but it might, it might just be the art style, but it doesn't look quite the same. It, it looks less like a corpse with bits missing, and more like he's like rotting a into ghoul. a skeleton just like a ghoul straight yeah. up yeah i imagine they're gonna not do that because like everyone has a face now in like the new game so they can like talk and look even like baraka looks more normal so he can talk correctly with motion capture and shiva for god's sake they butchered completely and made it look like a normal person in the face <laughs> like she's just a normal lady's face um so i think they're gonna go oh, the yeah. more human looking havoc but still the skull bottom I he think. does have like uh He's got a chin. He's not. It's not scold there. Yeah, no. It I'm is cool it. though that he like morphs into the. It looks cleaner though. I'm not gonna lie. In the MK9 ending, it looks kind of cleaner that he like morphs into the the skeleton instead of just like it being missing for some reason. Uh-huh. Just half missing. Mm-hmm. I, I like that missingism of it just because there's that like like there's that oh disgustingness chaos. or like yeah like like because f- theming with the chaos realm and shenanigans. Um, I mean, Havoc, if I if you told me my top five was what a character, Havoc will be on there too for me, just because mm-hmm. how interesting this character is. Um, Brusque Poet yeah. like did like a vote on like asked his community, like, what are your top 20 most wanted characters and stuff like that. Uh, surprisingly, number one was Havoc. Like, Havoc made it all the way to the top out of every other character. And that yeah. was, yeah. Same with mine. I had a couple of polls, and I was shocked that Reptile lost to Takeda. <laughs> Not really. That, like, shocked me. Because like uh, Takeda, uh, is so beloved. That's why it's like I would. I'm not too shocked about yeah, that. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's easy to see why because because Reptile has been in most of the games. He, he's had plenty of times to shine. Takeda is in one game, and so they want to see it realized. So, gotcha. and also it's like none of the other yeah. combat kits. It's just Takeda. Which is fair. I mean, I'd love to see him. I feel like, though, out of all the combat kids, like, Takeda, they really just nailed on their first try because all three variations feel different. Like, he has the teleporting mm. of Scorpion and Ninjutsu. Then he has fucking lightsabers and, like, tech shit in one of his variations. And then he just straight up has all whips. If you want to just whip it good and just be pure whip razor guy, he has that too. And I do like that variation because it establishes that technically it's not a chain. It's whips. But he can also throw it like a chain if he wants to but technically he's not fighting with like a chain like scorpion he's fighting with whips that have razors on them yeah so technically different yeah, which Take- i like Take- i Take- do think it's stupid with the dumb the dumb thing on his back is fucking stupid though sorry go ahead <laughs> now takeda is just like uh, not even talking about anything about a story mode just him himself it's like a person who's a kenshi's son trained by scorpion is also working with the special forces and has all these different gears that not only makes him like a a clone of kenshi or scorpion but also his own character it's just like lightning in a bottle literally for like this character <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. the only thing they fell short on a little bit in my opinion and this is what all the combat kids have this sin they're way too much like just normal modern paragon like there's oh, nothing interesting or sure. dimensional about their character they're just good guys yeah. you would think that kenshi with his i mean sorry takeda with his upbringing would have a bit of edge to him but also crack a joke often but like he'd still be a bit edgy but he's straight up like your high school friend that's he's how a he nice talks guy. like yeah. hey guys want to get lunch later 
oh god a bad guy there's like a fatality you know that's like oh man you guys want to get boba tea later <laughs> that's just how he comes off when you think he'd be like meditating in silence in the background or something like doing his little like you know stuff and then it's like kenshi huh and he's just like you know he's like, oh yeah let's go let's go on a mission and maybe every now and then he crack a joke you know i got but passed down to Kun sadly i guess <laughs> i guess they're cop- they're just copying marvel aren't they Maybe Snakes made that joke, like they're copying the MCU tone with a lot of the characters, because even Kenshi is like a Marvel character. And he makes all these jokes. Yeah, well, mm. makes a lot of jokes, whereas like with his backstory, he should be one of the most like serious motherfuckers, but he's still like cracking jokes. Well, <laughs> that's, that's the thing that Kenshi was, like he was a complete lone wolf in the original timeline. The only character he genuinely considered an ally was Sub-Zero, who saved his life. Mm. Yeah. Like the, only, the, only, the only time he shows loyalty to the special forces is in Sonya's non-canon Deadly Alliance ending, where she saves his life instead, and so then he joins Special Forces for real. Oh. But until then, he was just using them to get to Outworld to kill Shang Tsung. Oh. He didn't care about any of that stuff. He just had an opportunity, and he took Interesting. it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, and and then, like, you see in, in, in his bio, he's one of the few characters in Armageddon to get a bio, and he's, he's there talking about how Johnny Cage is the leader of this alliance. Well, I'm going to usurp him and take control, and I'm going to lead lead the good guys into <laughs> to victory. Damn. And it's like... It's like, and then you look at him in this game, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just a, you know, supportive dad. Show dad, hair, <laughs> and I make blind Sh- jokes. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, it's yep. like, even though that's his personality, people love him. I could definitely, I could see like people like his like. Yeah, same with Takeda though. Like he's just funny, but people still love him. I guess that's why they yeah. do it because if you make the character funny, like people like them no matter what. But it is a weird tonal clash with what the game is actually having happen on screen. But they're all yeah. treating it like it's just like. Our summer vacation sure is crazy this year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of like mm. another thing, I'd like. Well, I'm more, I'm more of the lore cutscene guy, or at least for MK mm-hmm. games. So I, I'm not like. I'll let you guys push for what you want for the gameplay wise shenanigans, but I'd like to see either the story mode to be a bit more. I, I kind of want to just see them try like something like conquest mode again. Like that's kind of why like Street Fighter Six is very interesting to me because the story mode is you running around in a town, and it's like oh that sounds like more ways to like interpret like the story or like the lore of these characters and just like interacting and stuff like that. Um, I, I'd like to have something similar to that in like a new setting, like an RPG in that in that aspect. If we can't get that, well, at least make it entertaining because I know it's not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> the cutscenes, at least. <laughs> I, I, I forget if I actually mentioned this in a video. I feel like I might have done, but I had this idea that they could have done something like that for, say, MKX. Like, imagine chapter one of MKX, where you have a party. You have Johnny, you have Sony, you have Kenshi, and you're running around this map f- dealing with, like, small enemies, like in Armageddon's Conquest mode. You get to the big fights. There's some optional ones off the side, like, oh, go over here to help Bo Rai Cho ah. against, like, Revenant Liu Kang. And when you go and fight him, you pick one of your characters to do a proper Mortal Kombat fight. And the, the goal is to just get to the, uh, the the Sky Temple entrance and then and do some fights there. But you get these little extra fights along the way. I think that would be a really cool way to do it. And hopefully, Street Fighter Six's story, uh, story mode will be really, really good. And then that will be what people start trying, like, shifting towards for story modes. Yeah. Like, uh, moving away from NetherRealm's method. And hopefully NetherRealm themselves will also take influence from it and start doing that. Obviously... We're not going to get that oh, this yeah, time, for sure. unless something radical's gone on back there. But hopefully, Street Fighter Six will be able to have be a big positive influence on how these stories are told, because everything going off Nether Realms is a bad idea because of how many flaws there are in it, <laughs> and that no one's, no one even tries to make it work better, except for like uh, Dead or Alive Five and Six, which had like a, a non-linear approach to it. Oh. And that, that's well, to it. be fair, Tekken Six was also a beat 'em up too, and th- that's not like too long away. Yeah, but that's kind of shit. Tekken Seven yeah. had a Tekken Seven had a story mode, but it was very weird. It, it was really cutscene. Like, two characters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then like, I'm the reporter talking about the story. <laughs> um, yeah, he was forced to talk that way too. They made him do yeah. that. The uh, yeah, it's really it's like the thing. As much as I love to suggest these things for Mortal Kombat, it's like it's so hard for them to do this because they're so well known for their very live action e cut scenes and cinematics for them mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So it's like, are they gonna change it? It's like, will they do that? It's like really un- like, yeah, probably yeah. not. Sadly, um, 
One last and thing. I'm I'll such a normie in this regard. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, one last thing I'll just I'll just mention that I want, and this is probably like it's gonna be in the game. I don't even need to mention it, but it's something I really love about Mortal Kombat. Just like do the do the uh, funny kooky Easter egg shenanigans all over your game, because that's always something that I love seeing. Whether it be like funny taunts or like funny um funny costumes or like um I know Snake is gonna disagree with me on this, but like I one of the things I love about Mortal Kombat 11 were the friendships. I thought that's one of like the greatest things they did for the game. It's just like that free stuff going on. It's like it's very cute, it's very funny, and they gave every single character one of them. It's just like how nice. It's just like something funny to use. I mean, and I, I, I do, I do like, I like the idea of the friendships. It's just I wish that the actual the, the opponent was part of the, the yeah, animation. Yeah, I, I do. Oh the, yeah, you're right. The um, well, the Sonia one where I think like uh, she gets like the robot or something. I thought, I thought that was like, oh, is she gonna do something to that like uh, person? But it's like, oh no, it's just gone sadly. But yeah, I agree. I wish they do do that. Also. Don't forget that they totally fucked up at the start. They changed this, thank God. It took them like a bit, but they finally changed it. When they first added friendships, how to actually activate the friendship was like you had a dumb requirement. Like you had to like um what was it? You had to like not block or something or you had to like um there was some requirement yeah, to do the friendship. You couldn't just do it like a fatality. Bell. It was really stupid. And they finally I think got rid of that to where you can just do it now, which is nice. I think you had to mercy them, maybe, to even get access to it or something. I oh, think so, okay. yeah. And oh, also, you couldn't do it in... Um, I don't think it was even possible to do in um, ranked settings at first. You couldn't even do it in combat league. <laughs> it was disabled, which was so stupid because I joked you the whole do... reason I wanted friendships, if they ever came to be a thing, is because people get mad at me for never doing fatalities, and I'm like, guys, I can't. I get demonetized. So it would be awesome to have a way to still, like you know do something at the end of the match but it's just not gore and friendships totally did that but then they made it almost impossible to activate friendships which was stupid because the whole point of friendship is that if you don't want to piss off your opponent or piss on their face you can just do a friendship and it's fun it's like a yeah. fun way to end the the fight less make toxic. it less toxic <laughs> and they made it so hard to do so it was really stupid uh, they fixed I, it though finally it just activates now yeah that's good uh, the best thing about friendships is the fact that some awesome, like these awesome modders out there who switch the character models and make great thumbnail and meme pictures with them. <laughs> the mm -hmm. one with the Cassie one with Cassie Cage. Cage. Like of, yeah, yeah. Uh... The Cassie Cage with every single character. <laughs> yeah, the Cassie Gotten Cage pose doing that. it with like Fujin for some reason is so popular on my channel. I made it into like an emoji. <laughs> yeah. The Jack saxophone is also good. If you have someone else with the saxophone, because it's oh, like yeah. a, yeah. if someone gets buffed, it's like huge buffs for Scarlet. It's like her playing the saxophone. <laughs> and it's like, yep, she chilling. It's pretty awesome, yeah. Uh, they're honestly all really good too. Like not a single friendship is like bad. Just some are like not as good as others, but they're oh, yeah. all pretty damn good, I think. Yeah, yeah, very. I, I I enjoy them. I think they're really fun. They're really cute. They totally missed out the chance to do Jade's, what we all wanted, but they're not going to do it, you know. <laughs> Could have just made her a straight-up stripper. <laughs> That's the friendship I wanted. <laughs> da, 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 da. Just money comes in from off, like, off frame. <laughs> just, like, dancing around the pole. Da, 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 da. It could have been classy. It could have been, like, just, like, classy pole dancing, you know, not, like, not seduction, not sexual or anything. But that's what we all wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, wasn't, that her, wasn't that her victory pose in MK9? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very Just popular one. Down, though. That's uh, also a fun mod one. You, yep, yeah, yeah, exactly. Shao Kahn. The Shao Kahn. <laughs> Shao Kahn is so though. famous. The Gore one's even funnier. <laughs> it's like giant body. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm impressed Goro that the, uh, the mod added like, their <gasps> laugh, too. So whenever they do the pose, <laughs> you hear their like laugh. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. So I've got it. Right, so, um... Uh, if you can get it, Sonic, where it's Sonya doing that on the pit, and then when you do the MK9 sucks, and Johnny says, uh, so that, that, that's not just a, a costume, you're real special forces, smash cut to Sonya doing the pole dance <laughs> in that same outfit. <laughs> I love it because you brought up that meme, Sonic, of like the Lin Quay girls. It could now possibly be canon that all the Lin Quay girls wear skirts. And it's now canon that all the Special Forces women in MK9 wear that outfit that yeah. Sonic is wearing. But it's all saluting. And like just like that. exposed outfit. <laughs> to which I would salute to. God bless America. I love this country. My Special Forces. And then just to keep forces. it fair. Just to keep it fair. All the men are dressed like Clark in King of Fighters 13 where he's wearing just the tactical vest and he's shirtless <laughs> underneath and he's buff as shit so like the men look like that too they're dressed like how men dress in Vietnam with just like the vest and like <laughs> that's it there you go just to keep it fair 
All right. Want to talk about some other fighting games? Yeah, I mean, Kami, Street Fighter 6. Kami, huh? Kami. Did, Kami. Kami. Yeah, we got to talk about Street Kami. Fighter so you want to take it away a tweet snake? saying like, so I can tell you, uh, it seems like you guys like Kami. Like literally that's the tweet that Street Fighter has made on their on Twitter recently. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of wild how people are going so, cra- so crazy now when we've known what the, exactly what the design was for months. <laughs> so the point where people were cosplaying the design before it was officially revealed, mm-hmm. we knew what Kami looked like. I, and when we see it here, it, I guess because we now see it in action, it's like, wow. <laughs> that, wow! It, it's such it's so good. Some it's people so good. don't care for it. Some people are it's angry good. about it. There's this guy who got angry, who got angry. But it's like, it's 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 a. I like when the characters don't just look exactly the same. Yeah, me too. And she still has her oh, classic oh, o- option. We've seen it yeah, leaked yeah, already. Yeah. She has yeah. the classic skin if you want it. Look, look, oddly enough, like for me, it's just me. When I see a face, I get like Nina Williams vibes. Yeah, um, everyone thought that way. I don't yeah, know what it is. A and she even bit. does like the neck breaker submission super, which people thought was very Nina to like do that weird neck break thing. But it's actually uh, from the Street Fighter Two movie, which was a super yeah. sick reference. Yeah, yeah, I've heard like people like. Oh, yeah, that, I, I, lo- I love stuff like that. <laughs> and her cat stretch has everyone going fucking nuts because they think it's like a, a thirst trap, which it kind of is. But she's also just doing a cat stretch. That's stretch. like the, the yeah. joke is that she's a cat. Yeah, yeah, because she likes cats. I do, she I do the think cat it's very costume, funny. For God's sake, a Street Fighter Four. <laughs> I do very funny that it's like sales, yeah. like what do you go? Street Fighter sales just increased by 300%. <laughs> the stretch. Yeah, real time footage of it going <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to make one like that, but I probably missed my window. I forgot to do it. I wanted to make one where it's like, watch this is the new Street Fighter 6 trailer. It's going to have two images. The first one is like Zangi flexing, and it's like, damn, he looks good. I want to go to the gym maybe today. Then it shows Cammy stretching. I got to go to the gym right fucking now! <laughs> it's like, to look good for Cammy. Yeah, I got to bag a girl like her. I got to look good. <laughs> I got to say, I kind of feel bad for uh, Zangief and Lily because the three of them got revealed in the trailer. 90% of everyone is just talking about Cammy right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like these two new characters. They're all good, oh, to hey, be fair. welcome back, our new character. And it's like, shh, shh, out of the way, out of the way. Cammy, Cammy, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think they're all yep. great, too. And do you the, want to know? Two, too. Here's a really cool touch that someone pointed out in the comments section of the Cammy trailer that I didn't notice. Maybe some of you chads did, but it's so fucking smart that somebody at Capcom thought to do this. Like, what a good artistic choice. So, did you notice that on her um, little denim vest that she has? There's the tassels hanging down on each side. It's like the belt, but it's like untied and just hanging on each side. Did y'all notice that? Let's see. So, oh. so the reason she has that is because now that her hair is short, she doesn't have her braids hanging down below her like hips anymore. But to keep that cool silhouette when she does her spiral arrow and stuff of it like wrapping around her, they added those fucking tassels to her oh. vest, so it's still there. And the guy even said in the comments, like Mr. Plinkett himself said, "You probably didn't notice it." but your brain did. That, and I'm like, that yes, is, that's so fucking good. That is a really <laughs> smart character design. Sorry, yeah, Mike. because it's a new like design. That's so cool. Yeah. Very, very smart. I really love that they did that. I think it's a really good skin. I didn't think it would look that good because in the leaks, it didn't look as good when she was getting beat up. But when she's doing stuff, it looks really cool. <laughs> and as a former animator, do you know what gave me a little animation gasm or an eye gasm when I was watching? When she does her spiral arrow now, she actually puts her hands on the ground and pushes and twists her arms to actually get the, the spin. She doesn't just like teleport into like a, a dive kick. Uh. She actually touches the ground and pushes with her arms. And then for her um, cannon strike, when she goes upward, same thing. She puts her hands down and presses up and twists. So it's like she's actually got the in-betweens. And even better, when she does spiral arrow and then cancels that animation into the, the next one, the, the cannon strike, she even like is stuck in the middle of that like landing where she catches herself with her hands. So when you cancel that, she goes from the, the landing in the, on the hands to pushing up. And it's a seamless transition where it actually makes sense when she transitions from animation to animation. It looks so fucking good. And I was like super excited. I hope that made sense. The, <laughs> the, way the animation I it. in this game is just... I, 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 even the art style. It's too good. Like, I am, yeah, it's like, whoa, this is unique and it looks good. Like, mm. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even a Street really Fighter impressed. fan. I'm looking. I want to buy this game. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm surprised they went so hard with the faces because they just look so damn good, and they keep getting better in each trailer. So it's clear that when we played the beta, that was not the final version of how it was going to look graphic wise. Because uh. Chun Li's face looked kind of mannequin-y to me in Street Fighter Six, but we haven't seen it since this like these new trailers. So I'm wondering if like it's going to have an update too because Cammy's face looks so damn real. Um, Lily's face looks super real. 
Um, so I'm wondering, like, if it's going to look even better still, because it's the RE7 engine, right? Or the RE8 oh, engine. Oh, is it? I mean, oh, so, okay. That's yeah. cool if it's RE7. Yeah. Yeah, all, all yeah the RE, RE engine's yeah. great for facial expressions and stuff. Though. That's so smart to use that then, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's I'm very a... excited. And Zangief still looks good. But hey, guess what? Hot take. I didn't notice this. Zangief's green hand did not come back. Green hand? His banishing flat, his green glove. Ever since Street Fighter Two. Zangief's had this move where he does a little like a little step and spin and he slaps it with his hand and it glows green and the whole point is it like it, it um, absorbs projectiles so he can slap a projectile away right in oh. your face and then command grab you it was meant to be a way to just like to d- destroy a projectile because he doesn't have projectiles right but then in Street Fighter 4 if you spend bar to do EX because there wasn't EX bar in the old game he could just go completely through the projectile he'd step past it and just slap you in the face and it made him get in easier but in Street Fighter V, it was infamously gone because Street Fighter V is kind of known as like the game where they tried new specials, but ah. also took specials away. So freakishly enough, like M. Bison does not have Psycho Crusher in Street Fighter V. He just doesn't have it. That's one of his like classic moves. Huh. He got it back at the very end of the game when they added V Trigger Two. He finally got it back, but it's only during V Trigger, which happens towards the end of the round. Um, but he didn't have Psycho Crusher. It was pretty crazy. And um, Zangief did not have Green Hand. A lot of characters were missing their moves. Chun Li does not have her flip kick, where she like flips and like kicks the ground. She doesn't have that. Jury lost her dive kick, but they're all back in Street Fighter Six. So everyone, I thought too that Zangief will get his green hand back. No, it's still fucking gone. But at in least exchange in the of that, he got. So we'll see. At least in the trailer, you're right. It could still be, but that'd be weird to not show it in the trailer because it would get a hype reaction from people. Uh. But um, he did keep every move from Street Fighter Five, including moves that are only normally in V Trigger. And then also, bizarrely enough, he got his move from Street Fighter IV Omega. And in case you don't know what Omega mode is, it is a stupid nonsense mode where they tried new things with the characters. It's banned in competition. It's just a fun what-if mode where characters get new moves and they tried new stuff. And they gave him his Street Fighter IV Omega stomp where he kicks you in the shin like three times in a row. Um, oh, so is it like... And they, they gave him that. Is it like Super Smash Bros. 4, the custom modes, where like each character has like three different types of moves that you can just choose? You don't choose them, but yeah, like it's just a new way to play. Like the character gets new moves, and some characters got slight changes like here and there. Like I think Ryu got like one new move, but then some characters got complete overhauls and were completely different in Omega mode, which is like super interesting. Uh-huh. I'm surprised that Cami didn't get her move from Omega, which I thought was really cool. She did like a little capoeira kind of quick sweep. And then she would spin like a tornado and like rise upward and launch you with it. But she'd stay on the ground. She was just, like uppercut kick you. So she'd sweep and then uppercut kick and it would launch you. And it made a cool little whoosh, like sound effect. And she made a little like whirlwind effect when she did it. That didn't come back. But it seems like it kind of lives on because now when she does cannon spike, it kind of looks like that at the start where she spins and like uppercuts. So it kind of lives on, I guess. But I was shocked I didn't make it in. I thought if like Zangief got his Omega that she would get her Omega. But nope. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, in the trailer, I noticed that at the very beginning of it, like, Zangief had a mask on. Do you think they'll have that as a skin mm-hmm. in the game, or just, like, that's just gonna be, like, his intro or something? Uh, he, he, he did, didn't he have a mask in Street Fighter Five for one of his costumes? Yeah, it's a very weird costume, because it otherwise looks like default Zangief, but it just adds the mask. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, in the concept art that was leaked for Street Fighter Six, that even shows the DLC characters, he is wearing a mask, I think. But I could be okay. wrong. Okay. So it might be an option to just have it on as like a little option. Because in Street Fighter V, there's a weird setting that was so stupid because they never even told people this. You had to research it yourself. For certain costumes in Street Fighter V, before it loads the match, just hold, I think, both bumpers and X on the <laughs> controller and then hold up on the D-pad all at the same time until the actual round starts. And then it'll give you an optional outfit for their current costume. So, uh-huh. for example... Jury's classic outfit for some reason added this disgusting jacket that she never had in Street Fighter 4 but they just gave her this weird jacket over the top if you hold that sequence it takes off the jacket and she looks like actual Street Fighter 4 Jury or oddly enough if you pick um, Lilith which is one of her cosplay options where she's Lilith from Darkstalkers she's very flat by default because Lilith is flat she's already like an A cup but if you hold that button sequence she gets normal sized Jury titties so she gets like her D's back (laughs) so it's just kind of funny (laughs) Got to make sure you learn that. The, the most insane version. <laughs> the, the insane version of this was when they did the uh, like uh, crossover costumes, like like the Resident Evil ones. It was full on different costumes. Yeah. Like, uh, Col- I think Colleen was Ada, and you had uh, Resi Six and Resi Four, but not as separate costumes. You had to do this button thing. Like, Cammy had Resi One and Three Jill. Mm. 
but you have to do this comp like why yeah and even <laughs> worse stupid. is the one that you wanted was usually what required the button code so for example if you wanted classic alex from third strike again for some reason by default it comes with this giant fighter jacket that he wears in his like um, arcade ending why is that default? Have that be the optional thing that you can add on if you want. I paid money for the third strike look. So it should not come with anything extra. Again, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to this, but if you're gonna call it nostalgia costume, why the fuck are you adding stuff to it? Like just, just give me how it's supposed to look. That's what I want. If Chun-Li gets the classic costume, I don't want some like really dumb sash around the middle of her that was never there. Like, I, I just don't want it. <laughs> or, or, or like when they put the, the gate, they put gloves on the alpha design. Yeah. I mean, it looks right, all did. right. It's not, a, it's not a bad <laughs> addition, but it's such a weird thing to include. Well, the alpha costume, sadly, despite being my one of my favorite costumes for Chun-Li, never looks good in the new games because she has different proportions. And in Alpha 3, she had a typical model-esque kind of body. She still had, like, a kind of big tushy and, and kind of muscular legs, but it was not to the degree that Street Fighter 4 and 5 are, so the Alpha outfit doesn't translate over as well because she had, like, skinnier legs in Alpha, so it looked better to have, like, the leggings. But uh... when you're that fucking thick, <laughs> leggings look different for, like, you know, it just doesn't, the ratio is not quite there. Well, luckily, um... it looks good in Fortnite, and that's all that matters. <laughs> Did you know? Oh, now that you brought that up, I gotta mention it. So, if you do a certain dance in Fortnite with the men, their ass has jiggle physics like it should. Like, it's huh? a little slight jiggle. Like, if, if, if Thanos drops it like it's hot on that one, like, dance animation where they drop down and like, do a little, like, this thing. This, I like, did you can not watch, know. Like, like, Hulk will actually jiggle a little bit, and so will um, Thanos. Maybe they don't jiggle, but it moves like it should, right? If you pick any female character, there's no physics down there. The ass is stiff as a board mm -hmm. during that sp any of those dance animations. And so even on Chun-Li, you don't get like the oscillation from her ass that you should get during that dance. And people thought it was censorship of the butt. It's not actually. The reason they did that is because some characters wear skirts and they did not uh, want to have a panty shot okay. accidentally. Yeah. So it removes all sense. physics when they do that dance move. Yeah. Although to be fair though, there are so many butt dance moves in Fortnite that they're just pretty much still all used on the Chun Li. <laughs> That's the best one with Chun Li is that one. The little do 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 do. You know what's funny is that dance said, was so good. That basically is like Chun Li's theme in that game, from what I've heard. Oh yeah, it's like because they made her so unashamedly like <laughs> Dexter's mom level thick. Like they made it just unabashedly. She is so big, and it's funny because even that little dance, this guy did it as a troll, right? You'd be in the middle of a competitive match, and his teammates would stop, turn go back and just get a look at that dance when he was doing it in the middle so, of like a match. So in, Randos in, that he's playing with had to see um, it. In, in Fortnite, <laughs> before you start a game, you'll have like a one minute wait time and everybody will be around you just hanging out and showing their emotes. I see. When Chung Lee does that, everybody crowds over. <laughs> You just stare respectfully. They just respectfully. crowd over. And or, no, they use the sitting yeah. emoji and eat some popcorn in front of the, the dance. <laughs> See, we, we, need to, we need to get that in Street Fighter 6. You know the, the arcade uh, lobby where everyone can hang out between matches? We need to have that kind of stuff there. So it's like one plays with there with a costume character doing these little dances and everyone else is like, yes, yes, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to recreate to see, like, Fortnite um, Chung Lee in the customization <laughs> in Street Fighter. <laughs> so everyone's uh before the match starts in Street Fighter Six, there's that disguised loading screen where they're just walking through and everyone's like chanting their their name yeah. and like and they're just like staring each other down. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently it's different. Like the, the the place they're in is different based on the stage too. Like the little waiting area is different depending on the stage. Oh, cool. But cool, I'm cool. curious like what Kami's is gonna be, what Zangief's is gonna be. Like is Zangief just gonna be flexing like a model down the runway the oh, whole time, likely, like showing yeah, up? Yeah. And is Cammy just going to have like a thousand yard stare and just walk straight like an assassin would? <laughs> that makes sense. Or is yeah. she going to do something cool? Jury still has the best one to me so far. Oh, yeah. She's just mad she's dogging like the opponent the yeah, whole yeah. fucking time. Taunts and him. she even turns upside down you, you and is still looking at him. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know what I want Cammy to do? I want Cammy to be like this holding a little kitten. Oh! Just holding it. Just and then she like, lets it go off when the match is about to start. That'd, That'd be, be very cute. cute. Just like, hey, go on. And, and, and then you have it as a victory pose. One of the victory poses that, 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 that the cat comes back and she lifts it up. That'd be very yeah, be cute. Cool. That was so, like, it's just like, like to bookend the match. Show the cat, clashes hopefully. with her design. Yeah, the cat should be definitely I, I hope. I hope the game has more than one victory pose per character mm -hmm. because I'm Doubt, sick of games not doubtly, doing that. but yeah, that, I does. would, yeah, I would. Oh, victory pose. Um, it has round different animations, not different victory poses, though. They're always yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Round, round, okay, get the... Um, but so how hard is it to give us two? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, no, listen, you know Snake, what? What you Kami know what? has to do... Mm -hmm. 
No, I was gonna say like that's something another realm is, is should be praised for. They have multiple victory poses for each character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is cool, but at the same time, I wonder how well, much time was wasted do. on that shit. It could have been spent balancing the game. <laughs> and, I wonder about that uh, sometimes. They do M uh, yeah, they have it in MK11. Now you have to unlock them via crypt and, and uh, playing the, the towers yeah. and stuff. But, whereas like, but the previous games don't they only have one each. Like it, it, it's such an embarrassment when you when Dead or Alive five and six are showing you up, and they make them specific to whether you get a perfect. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. the, but like. <laughs> it's a bare minimum. Give us two. Give us two animations. Like I think it was a, a, a absolutely wasted opportunity with uh, MK11 that we never got the Injustice Two ones for Sub Zero, Raiden, and Joker. Yeah. Like how hard would that be to just, just bring them right over? Uh, yeah. I, I will say like I only unlocking laughed because of your defeated expression. You went like you're in the middle of it. And went, <laughs> That's why I laugh because you realize that it's just like it's futile at a certain it's point. It's futile. To even ask for certain yeah. Things. I would say from like a when unlocking want... scene part, it's kind of annoying. But for like whenever I make my videos and I have to like talk about this character and showcase something cool, those those victory animations come in clutch all the time. So it's good as a content creator, oh, yeah. I would yeah. say. <laughs> Why can't we pick them though? Why can't we pick the end of the round um, like taunts? That's so dumb that like they're there, they're unlockable, but you can't pick which one that they do. That always bothered me. Oh. Um, I think I think Tekken. Yeah, that's I don't know. Also, but I remember Tekken Five. If you held a certain, held diff certain buttons, like before the intro, intro or victory animation, it would be a specific one. That's really cool. So oh, there's one assigned. So there's one assigned to the X, X button. Hold X, and you'll play this animation. Why can't we do that in MK11 yeah. instead of just being completely random? Which one we're going to get? Or the ones we selected? talking about? Yeah, great victory like in animations. I just remembered how awesome Tekken Tag Team's victory animations are. Where like almost like all the characters will have oh. like these different interactions. Well, and sometimes they won't, but it's like it's. Like I saw like a compilation videos and stuff. It's like it's really adorable. It's like wow, so much, so much, so much love for these victory animations. If we do in fact get a tag <laughs> team mode in Mortal Kombat 12, we might get to see that, but we'll see. Oh, I doubt it, but that would be so the, cute if they do that. Nah, <laughs> uh, but the, the really the sad part is that in Tekken Tag Tournament 2, those victory animations have more character development than anything in Tekken <laughs> <Yes>. 7. <laughs> There's for, like character because, development like, of these characters because like because yeah. uh, like like uh, it go all the way back to Tekken 2. It was, I think it was Law's ending where he's he does his, his backflip and Paul's like, yeah, step aside, buddy, and then he does it but he lands flat on his face. <laughs> yeah. When they win a match, when they win a match together in tag two, uh, Law does it and then Paul does it and he lands. He goes, <laughs> like and Law's like, yeah, <laughs> it's so cute. Yeah. Like, That's him so up. cute. Or, or, or you get like King and Armor King like being like on good terms now, or uh, Paul and Kuma and just or. or we go, but if in Tekken Five, if Yoshimitsu loses to Raven in the story mode, it, he fucks up at doing the little hand signs, uh, like no, you're doing it all wrong, and it kicks him. But then here, they both do it perfectly, and it's like this is great. But then the actual story is nothing. It's like, well, the oh, actual game the, is um, uh, uh, right <laughs> from what I've heard. <laughs> well, the game, well, Tekken Tag Two was fun. It just the online was terrible, and like, uh, um, purists hated the new gameplay mechanics and stuff because it was very like. At a high level of play, I'm sure it was very annoying to deal with. Uh, I loved all of it. Tekken Tag 2 was one of my favorite fighting games to come out. Nice. And now that you bring up the Yoshimitsu animations, that's what made me the most sad. Because despite Yoshimitsu being like the nicest, generous guy, he's like literally Robin Hood. He seems to have so much beef with people. Because a lot of the outros are them trying to betray him. And he just like doesn't let them. So for example, he'll try to shake Kunimitsu's hand. And she like goes to stab him instead, but he teleports away in a cloud of dust or something uh -huh. and then like raven has a similar one where they try to kill him but the, the sign one is cool they're both in the signs together i like that one um the Bus dr boskanovich is a cute one where like do you know what that is um sonic or not dr, dr. boskanovich is like a really old scientist is he the um, guy who like makes all the crazy things in the lore or like for like um yeah kind of... he's a scientist he, he and, makes some and, of yeah them. and like he's a funny three, character he was like right? the most broken unlockable character because he was so bizarre yeah, yeah. Oh, so he was he in fights with explosions too. okay pretty much. okay yeah, he's but like a very his, important um, outro lore with Yoshimitsu. Character. Yeah, he is. He's, he he made yes. Yoshimitsu's um, arm. He is the reason that Bri um, Brian is cybernetic. He didn't made he... Um, Alyssa. Alyssa. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't he do like um, the kangaroos he, he designed, and uh, like he, in the raptors he, and stuff? Uh, <laughs> did he? I don't know. Yes, I, th I yeah, think yeah, he yeah. did. Oh. And I, at least in the, the OVA, I think oh, makes it. Kazuo just wants these crazy games. animals or something, from what I recall. Yeah. 
and I, th- I, th- I think, I think he designed one or two of the Jack robots as well. Ah, uh, yeah, makes but sense. yeah, the, the Doctor is like important to Laura, and like, but when he's playable, he's like a kind of a funny yeah. joke character and stuff. That's yes. what I recall. Yeah, yeah. And he's outro with Yoshimitsu is like Yoshimitsu will walk over and offer his hand, and he takes his hand, and Yoshimitsu just like spins his sword and starts to fly away and just takes Baskanovich with him, <laughs> like he's a free that, yeah. taxi ride for Baskanovich. <laughs> Which is a callback. A callback to Yoshimitsu Tekken 2 ending, the first time we saw Boskonovich, yeah. is Yoshimitsu jumps up to a helicopter that Boskonovich is in, grabs him, carries him under his shoulder, jumps out the helicopter, spins like that, and the helicopter explodes behind him. Oh, that's him. cute. And it's like, that's where the, the thing starts. It's a callback to that. Damn it. It's, no, Very nice. I, I, don't, I, don't like ta- I don't like a lot. There's a lot about Tag 2 I don't like, but, but that one particular part of the game is it so is. good. The victory yeah. animations are so good. I love these animations. <laughs> it's, it's, it's similar to what I mentioned a couple episodes ago with the Jojo Eyes of Heaven. It's like, oh, this fan service is so great in this game. Game sucks, but the fan service is so great. <laughs> what would be an amazing outro for Yoshimitsu in Tekken 8, which I assume he's going to be in because he's never missed a game, but uh. what would be an amazing outro is a reference to the very first Tekken game, or maybe Tekken 2, but I think it's the very first Tekken game where he robs the prize pot for the Iron Fist tournament, and he's like riding away on horseback, and he goes to a poor town, and he just lets all the money come out and like fly behind him to all the poor <laughs> villagers. So he's like literally Robin Hood, which blows Law's fucking mind because Law's there like, <laughs> it's like PS One graphics, so it's so funny to watch him <laughs> yeah, lose his yeah. shit. Um, but I want that to be a victory animation, like either on the horse or just like to have him pull out a giant money like box and just start throwing money everywhere doing his outro. That'd be a fucking awesome reference to him just giving money to people. Um, which is why he's wait did he steal it or did he just win the first Iron Fist tournament? He may have just won. I can't in remember. In that case, in that case, he won. But it, I, I, I believe in like Tekken Four in his ending, uh, you don't see it. But his guys off screen, I think they steal uh, Heihachi's vault oh. or something. That sounds very ninja. <laughs> nice. And, and, and the he, uh, Heihachi's like, kill him, and Yoshimitsu just like escapes. <laughs> I also like how in Tekken Tag Two. Um, Yoshimitsu has a unique interaction during the intros because everyone does like depending on their lore reasons right but it's cool to see really hard ass characters like Kazuya who are normally either dismissive or mocking in their intros with their opponents but if you pair him with Yoshimitsu he just looks at him and goes you like he's a bit <laughs> low-key intimidated by Yoshimitsu then Yoshi's like oh is cool <laughs> through like his goofy shit <laughs> so it's, I love that like Yoshimitsu is like a goofball but he's like canonically a threat if you fight him except not in the animated netflix show because he gets beaten by anna off screen we, we will and talk about that some mates. other day <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that someday uh, but actually this kind of can correlate to tech and nate if you guys want to add anything about that i mean recently all i did was showcase kazuya but well actually they had um yeah. i guess it was kazuya you're right which is yeah. funny because we already knew that kazuya was in the game because he's in <laughs> trailers and shit but we finally got his actual gameplay, gameplay. gameplay yeah. there's some cool there's some cool changes there. They've changed some iconic moves, like when he would tackle you with the demon form, fly up, and then slam your face into the ground. Now instead, he tosses you down and then like jackhammer punches on top of you, which is kind of cool. It's a slight change, and it makes it different from Devil Jin, which I think is cool. Now their their ah. fly animation is going to be different. Also, it seems like his um his devil transformation is going to be more useful, which is good because they keep trying to make it more and more useful in each game because. People would ignore it in some of the past <laughs> games. Like, it wasn't good, so they just wouldn't do it. So they're trying to make it more and more relevant. I think it's part of the heat system now, too, so he can like combo into the demon form and keep the combo going, which is sick. Um, King looks really good, too. I imagine King's going to be really effing good in um, Tekken 8 because they keep talking about how the heat system is unique to him. So I'm wondering what they mean by that. I can't wait to see some of the, the new stuff that he gets when in the heat mode. That game, it's funny because every fighting game is trying to be more easy for beginners yeah right? they're trying yeah, to like bring definitely. in more of the casual audience i think the heat system is going to confuse the fuck out of beginner players because it does like 10 things <laughs> i think it's going to confuse people all the stuff that it can do but we'll see it depends on how good that tutorial is because um tekken uh, tag 2 actually was famous for how good its tutorial was uh, so we'll see if it's like just as good in um tekken 8 or not i can't recall the tutorial in tekken 7 uh, if it even had one so uh, in terms of my tekken gameplay knowledge i like the only Tekken game I played, I don't even know which game it was. All I know is it was in an arcade, and that was like, oh, geez, like 20, maybe 20 years ago, or like 20, 15 years ago, and like that is the only experience I had with that fighting game. But I have heard mm-hmm. people say like the learning curve or like the amount of stuff you can do with each character is like there's like a hundred moves or something like that. Is it like would you think yeah, that Tekken least. would yeah. be like? A hard game to get into like especially for like casuals nowadays or do you think that game can still be like randomly pu- push buttons and you can still play it and stuff 
I have a very unique take on this, because at the highest level of play, it is one of the most difficult fighting games. But at the beginning level, I think it's arguably one of the easier fighting games if you do the trick mm. that I learned in Tekken Tag 2. So if you map... So Tekken by default only has four buttons, and the bumpers and the triggers don't do anything unless you tell them to. Mm. So what okay. you can do is go into the, the controller menu, and you make it to where one of the bumpers or trigger, doesn't matter which one, make it do both punches. So it's like it's left punch plus right punch. Make yeah. one of the triggers do both kicks. And then what you can oh. do, say the combo is like um, is left, left, right, right, left. You can just press the first button with square and then mash the both punches button. And it'll do the whole sequence for you. Whichever punch it's supposed to be, it will autofill like all by itself. And oh. the same goes for if your yeah. combo ends with different kicks. You can just mash the both triggers button. Yeah. Because like, like every two buttons you can touch, like that has a different function. Yep. It's usually like uh, these, like these two and these two are for different uh, for different throws. Mm -hmm. But you can just map that to the shoulder. But that's how I, I've always oh. done it. Map it to the shoulder buttons. So you can just go L L one to do like the basic uh, throw. That's interesting. And like that. Can, okay, wait. Yeah, it's, it's it's a cool thing. So in Tekken, mm -hmm. you I, can I think, map. I think sometimes. I think some. I think triangle and X sometimes will do stuff when you press M together, yes. but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, there's sure. every button combination you can think of. Some characters have it. Yeah. So you can map like two button presses onto one button. Yes, which I have to do because I'm, I'm I have a small yeah. thumb, a very small, comedically oh. <laughs> small. It's the same width as my fingers. Like it's a very skinny thumb, and so maybe that's common. I have a very I was made fun of for my skinny thumbs. Anyway, oh, um, that's, basically. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> not 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 not, skinny, not bad. Skinny not badly butt. made fun of. People would just, <laughs> if skinny I, thumb dog. Skinny skinny. <laughs> God was funny with my proportions. I'll tell you what. Because God made me like six foot three, and I can stack muscle pretty easy. But he gave me artist hands, which are bad for lifting weights. Like my arms, my hands get fucking tired. They're bad for pull ups. I have skinny fucking fingers, bad grip. He gave me artist hands, but then like a, a, a fighter's body. It's a very weird homage of things. Those are good. Those are good. Those are good right there. Uh, I don't know why you have those on hand, but those are good. Um, so what I want to say also, so here's an even better cheat code, um, Sonic. So okay. well, first off, I gotta finish that that first thing. So <laughs> I have a hard time pressing square and circle at the same time. I'm I'm just bad at it. I can't reach um, X okay. and B <laughs> X at and the B. same time. It's okay. hard for me, right? Okay. Whichever console you're on, right? I can't press those two. So I just map it to left um, bumper, so I can actually get it. Cause it's really hard for me to press that. Um, oh, oh, he's there. Oh, what? Snake. You there? Snake flashed twice, and now he's yeah. frozen. Oh, are you frozen, Snake? What? Now, oh. Hello? Now I think back. you're just lagging. No. Now he's I all glitchy. Just, yeah, I think you're just fine. Just me? It's just, you're just lagging. It's just me, that's, that's fine. True and a jump scare. <laughs> here's, here's the really cool shortcut that my friend taught me, who's a Tekken expert, and it's such a good hack. So, it, the way command grabs work in Tekken is some of them have chain throws. So if you're playing King, for example, and you land the first command grab, which is just like up forward both punches or something, right? If you land that, you then have to press like a sequence of like five to ten buttons really quickly to get the next part of the throw. And there's actually different branches you can go down that lead to even more throw options, right? So you can have like, for example, three, three different sequences in the same command grab throw. And people think you have to memorize that, which is ideal, but guess what you can do instead? You can map the left stick, which normally does nothing. It's just an analog stick. It serves no purpose. You can make it to where when you press down on it, it's all four buttons at once. So once you land that very first initial command grab, just mash that stick, and it'll give you the entire sequence. Oh, the whole thing. Just mash it. It <laughs> autofills the whole thing for you. And that's why I say the Tekken is not as hard as people think at a casual level, because you can do cheats like this that are definitely in there on purpose. Now, okay. here's the downside. If you do that mashing technique it always gives you the same route. And the opponent, if they know the break for that, can break out every single time. Whereas normally the next part of the throw is a guess. Like they have to guess which one you go for. It's not okay. a guess anymore if you, if you mash. So it's got a pretty easy way to defeat that. Although I think there's a workaround because I've, I've changed how much I mash. If I mash slower, I get a different outcome sometimes. So if I memorize the number of mashes, I might be able to actually get it consistently. Yeah, but it's just fun to do it like at, at evo i almost made a kid throw his controller because he did not know how to break anna's throw and her chain throw if you do the whole thing does like 50 percent damage these chain throws are no fucking joke they hurt kings infamously his rolling um his king death cradle his rolling death cradle does like 75 to 80 percent damage on your health bar and it's just one 
it starts with an unblockable and then it just keeps going and your health bar just drains so theoretically you can touch the opponent like twice and then just land that command grab and you win the round and it's it's really good i call it the return to gamestop because you know that made people take their game back when they got hit by that shit oh. so <laughs> i call it the return to gamestop very nice very but nice. yeah so you can cheat in Tekken, is my point. There's absolutely cheats. Okay. And I use them all the time. I was playing Anna at Evo, and I kept doing that, that command grab because he did not know how to break it. And you could watch him, like, unravel because he was a good player. But Tekken is about knowing your opponent, too, like what the characters can do, like your opponent characters. And he couldn't break the throws. So whenever I landed that command grab, I watched him just take his controller and go... Just hit all four buttons at once, hoping one of them was the correct break. Oh he my. just started slapping it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Uh, now, unfortunately, he ended up beating me. Like He barely oh. won at the end because I made a, a risky gamble, and I messed up the button, I think, and he won. So he shook my hand and was super happy. He's like, oh, my gosh, you're such a good player. Like That was incredible. And so I'm glad he won <laughs> because watching change. him hit that controller so aggressively, <laughs> like he wanted to win more than me. So I guess he deserves the <laughs> W. That's funny. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. interestingly, I think – what okay, I guess we could also use this as one of like the final send-away topics because we are approaching the four-hour mark. Yeah. Um, and that is the fact that, like, um, Street Fighter, Tekken, and Mortal Kombat, the big, th- the big three, are all coming out in the same year. Like, I think it's that's kind great. of insane. Like, we're going to get something like this. Um, any, any opinions about that? Like, what do you guys think? Like, what's going to take the crown? Like, what's going to happen with, like, what game are people going like, to want to play more and stuff? Uh I'm I'm gonna say that I feel like of the because of the three Tekken's the one I enjoy the gameplay mm. of the most. So I think it, from a gameplay standpoint, that's the one I would enjoy the most. Mm-hmm. But I think as far as the overall package goes, just of how the last few have, have gone and what we've seen, and it's a little unfair because Street Fighter we've seen so much oh, more yeah. of it compared For to sure. the others. But I do think I think Street Fighter is probably gonna be the better overall package. It it seems yeah. Just lo- looking at what we've what, what we've yeah. seen, uh, and, and going off like the previous games, like Tekken Seven was you know not very good <laughs> and uh, uh M- M- mk well you know my thoughts oh, yeah. on mk games you got so. your critique video yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm, so I, I, I for me i think street fighter is gonna it's gonna take it no but yeah luckily though but I'll, I'll probably enjoy playing tech yeah, yeah. more luckily though i think the games don't come out like same month or same time i think it is going to be more spread out or no is there a yeah. release date for tekken think- 8 right now or do we do we know anything about that i've heard that there's actually a rumor it could release in 2024 but i find that to be weird because they've already shown so much and it looks like yeah. it's further along than we think because the way they designed the game surely they haven't completely finished three characters and then the rest just aren't even close i imagine they work at the same kind of progression rate so i imagine that if king is that done that almost everybody's probably like almost done. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah, think yeah. it's going to take a full year for them to be done. So I, I'd be shocked if it released in 2024, but I don't think it has a, a release date yet. <laughs> the Tekken 8 release date is scheduled for between April 2023 and March 2024. So, uh. <laughs> That's weird. What a big... I mean, to be fair, Tekken has... I hope they don't do this again because it kind of killed Tekken 7 at the start. I hope they don't do that weird thing where it's only in arcades at first or when it's only available in certain countries at first and then the console peasants get it later because that's what Tekken 7 did. It was in the arcades for like a a few months before it came to us. Interesting. I mean, I, th- I think they, I think they announced it that that is going to consoles first or yeah, something. Yeah, I think they finally said they're breaking that dumb trend. That's good. So that's I hope good. that like they don't like yeah. just test it for a long ass I mean, time. I mean, it's been really bad the last couple, the last few. Where like Tekken Six and Seven had two different arcade versions before the console version, yeah. which was confusing that, to me that, as a pleb. Which is basically one of the reasons I think why Tekken Cross Street Fighter never happened because they're like, oh, we're busy working on this Tekken game. It's like, yeah, you do like two versions and then you do the console ports, and so it's like. It takes years to do one game. You know, I think the sad yeah. thing about that is the fact that it's like, oh, we're not going to do that this time because arcades are kind of like going a little bit less popular, which is like a good and kind of sad news if you think about it. <laughs> People are increasingly yeah. not going outside. Even sports sports bars are going under because people would rather just watch sports at home with a streaming service than actually uh, go to a bar to watch sports. Well, also COVID. why go hang I out with like random... Yeah, pretty big deal that, there. That, yes, yeah. that was the start of it, but I think it's more that it helped people mm. realize they don't need the sports bar. Yes. It's yeah. the same with how businesses are letting you work from home now and not forcing you to show up to work as long as you clock in because they found that like you're just as productive at home so they're not making you come in because it costs money to like 
keep the lights on. <laughs> so nah. they'll just like save money by not having as many people come in, right? Yeah. Um, but same with the sports bars and same with the arcades. People discovered that like online is, is still just really, really good. In Texas, I can get fucked because there's like no arcades here. And if there are any arcades here where I live, that, that's not true. Some Dallas cities have it, but where I live, there are none. Um, the closest thing we have is like whenever some Chad has throwaway money and they buy like an old bowling place or whatever and renovate it. And they just put, um, they put these arcade cabinets that are not game specific. You put a bunch of games on them and they have you bring your um, own controllers or your own sticks and you just plug it into the um, arcade thing and you can play whatever game is on there. And it's a lot oh, more nice. fun because like you can play everything and it allows him to have like 30 of the same cabinets and then just have all the games on each one. And it, that that's is very the smart, closest thing yeah. that we have um, here in Texas. So we've been saying get fucked as far as arcades. I thought arcades didn't actually exist anywhere as a kid. I thought it was like a remnant <laughs> of like the 90s because there were none. They got rid of all of them in Texas. Um, Interesting. But yeah, I, I have a funny arcades. arcade story if you want to uh, hear you, it. You, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, just, it's real quick. If you want to hear this funny arcade story, I think the yeah, audience totally. would enjoy it. So um, when I went to the Philippines with my girlfriend um, at the mall when we were shopping, they had a straight up full on arcade. And close to the entrance was Tekken 7. So I was playing Tekken 7 on arcade. And even though I'm pretty decent at Tekken 7, I don't play on stick. So I have a very clear handicap. Um, but even so, I was winning for the most part. And what's awesome is that like, a crowd started the form. <laughs> and I realized why. It's because it was pretty much kill the tourist. <laughs> like, get the tourist off this arcade cabinet. Like, he keeps winning. Like, we got to show him. Like, show him the hometown power. <laughs> so they kept, like, lining up to fight me and, like, beat the tourist. And finally, I did lose, and like it was my fault. I, I I did the right call, but I didn't have enough health to survive. I did an uh, armored super to beat his really telegraphed attack, but I didn't have enough health to survive. I thought I did, so he killed me, and I was like, oh, because I thought I pulled off a really cool read. Then everyone else lit up and got super hyped that I finally lost. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> like. <gasps> <laughs> they're all hyping the dude up like patting his back and stuff that he finally beat me oh my gosh and i was like okay well i looked at my girlfriend i'm like we can keep shopping now like this, this is good <laughs> she's like yeah we can keep shopping. <laughs> that's hilarious that's such a lovely story it's great the uh i used to go to the arc uh, we, we we had a family tradition where like um maybe once a month or something we would go to the department store and my parents would go to like i don't know jason's or care for to like shop around there and me and my brother would just go to the arcade for a couple hours and that's always been like my memories back in the day. Like my favorite game to play in the arcade was a game called Batman. Have have you, any of you oh, have cool. he heard about this game, Batman? I think that's what it's called. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm wrong about this. It'd be funny. So if it's I'm not wrong. the Batman. You play as a bat instead, like like a yes. Like a it's like bat? it's like people who are like bats, like like you know like baseball bats, and the whole entire game is just like a baseball bat worldview, and you fight a bunch of people who are like baseballs or like you know in the and like you you have like these special moves. It is the sickest, most awesome beat up game like like ever. <laughs> it is so fun. <laughs> uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe cool. like ABGN covered a video about it, and I was like, oh my gosh, nostalgia coming back to me. So, I have to watch all these fucking great channels like Your Movie Sucks, um, Angry Video Game Nerd. I'm sad that I did not jump on the Angry Video Game Nerd hype train. Go ahead. Ninja Baseball Batman. That's what the game is called. Yeah, super fun beat up <laughs> game. <laughs> That's what it's called, yeah. It just reminds me of that. Have y'all seen that like really silly meme where it's got like Batman like from the comics? What'd you just throw at me, you son of a bitch? You want to fight? You want to fight? I just see What'd that. you just throw at me, Snake? <laughs> oh, Ninja Star. Nice, nice. Very cool. A little paper, nice, paper Ninja nice. Star. Origami. But um, basically, there's this funny little image of, like, Batman from the comics, and he's fighting a literal baseball bat that has, like, Looney Tunes arms and legs, and he goes, No, it's not the same. Yours is one word. I'm two. <laughs> <laughs> Batman. <laughs> Which is legally that's, that's the same. That's the thing they use in... Uh... That's the theme they used in bomb DC's Bombshells. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it. It, it started out with, I think, statues or posters that are done in, like, a, a Rosie the Riveter-style propaganda poster. I assume, because it's, like, yeah. It's, like, reimag it reimagines various female DC heroes, like, in, like, that kind of style. And, like, so Batwoman is baseball-themed. Uh -huh. Okay. She has the pointy, the point, the pointy ears are on her hat, but she is over, uh, overall in a, a baseball awesome. uniform, J just with like like a, like how in early seasons of Arrow, he, he wore like grease over his eyes, it's yeah. like that. Well, to be fair, one of but my yeah, favorite like designs for Batgirl uniform. was in one of the recent comics where she just has like the bandit mask, and then she has like the um 
the, the, the ears just come out of her hair. Like it's like a braid underneath her hair that you can't see. And the, the yeah. ears just come out. I, I just find that more interesting than like an actual cowl, like what Batman has. Like the one behind me, she's wearing a full on yeah. cowl, which is still cool. But I like the minimalist look when it's pulled off well. So the baseball cap having the fucking bad ears is fucking awesome. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the uh, that's what they look like in the game. And so like that's a bit of a poster of the the baseball people, the baseball Batman. Ah. Yeah. Uh, don't don't watch it now, but I just sent like a trailer just so you understand like the art style that it goes for. It is like creative, super fun, and some really wacky shit Man. happened in that game. It's so awesome. <laughs> it looks like fun. It reminds me of like um the old X Men arcade game where you walk around and beat people up, or like the oh. Simpsons beat 'em up game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beat 'em up. Well, as far as like the like, nostalgia uh, vibes, like. Oh my gosh! Mortal Kombat 12 trailer day confirmed. <gasps> really? Yep. Wow. Like yep. True Underdog Gaming. Wow. I know. What I know when it's going to come out. Oh. What an informative uh, video. Dang. <laughs> it's oddly enough doing better than the actual announcement video like so far. It's like... <laughs> which could be because YouTube finally trusts me again to get views. So I finally crawled out to, of that like to, shadow ban to, hole. To be fair, but, like... But I, 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 are you surprised? Are you actually surprised that a, a video that says... The the, tr- the trailer release date is confirmed. Is doing better exactly. than one who just says that the game has you been did. announced. Yes. Like yes, everyone everyone knows the game is announced. Most people don't know when the trailer is going to come out. So that's got the more pertinent exactly, information. Exactly. So of course it's going to be better. <laughs> what is wrong with you, you fool? <laughs> You're supposed to be sad. the impressive You're manager lecturing. with the YouTube background and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, I just realized something. We went through the whole entire podcast hyping up the whole True Underdog getting hacked story, and now we're going to end without talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know my hack story, just watch this video on screen. Sonic put it on screen. Yeah. This is my, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you a thumbnail. And then if you want to see an interview about it, watch this video with Ernesto Lopez on Button Check because we covered it too in an interview where I tell you how many times I shit my pants. So there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. You've, you've made like two videos about it, so there is that too. But anyways, so that's been a... Oh man, there's so many topics we didn't talk about, but we had a bunch, so I could understand why we we didn't go. We can keep going yeah. if you're not a big old pussy. We can go for another two hours. <laughs> my, my, I, I have my brother sleeping in the next door. Okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll oh, do yeah. that, dog. If you if you edit one of the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> He's thinking about it. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I had to do it one time. I used to do like podcasts and it was super easy, but um, even just then, like like moving across, like so you don't constantly talk over each other, you create the illusion that we're all perfectly in sync and we don't cut each other off. Just that alone is like annoyingly time consuming. So funny. I think I'll pass. <laughs> the funniest thing is like, I think the hardest part about editing the podcast is setting up all our clips, like synchronizingly perfectly <laughs> and then like cutting it all there. And then now I can play the whole thing and watch the whole podcast. That thing takes me 30 to one hour for some reason, 30 minutes to one hour. <laughs> That's the most like, and even if it's not the most time consuming, which in your case it is, it's still at the very least the most tedious and the most like tedious. dull because you're not That's doing anything word. fun. Yeah. You're just lining things up, which is not artistic. So it makes you feel very tired very quickly when you're doing it. <laughs> What, what I think what I think could help is if you record like the screen as we're all talking, like the full things you can see us all, and then sync e- each individual one of us up to uh-huh. that because that's already synced. Kind of. Well, what I do yeah. is like so that, 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 that might save in the some very time. beginning of the recording, I would um, I would actually record our audio, but then when we're when I make sure you're all recording, I'll shut that off so that way I'll know like when we're synced up and stuff like that in the editing. Mm, that's that's usually what I do. It's been getting a little better. Uh, any, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even mention some of the some of the things with the with the Snowblind video that that got released recently. It's been doing pretty good. Thank you all for, for watching that that video. I'm happy for Yay. you, man. I'm happy that you can release <sighs> your videos lot. like whenever they're done and they still perform well. Because I know that I probably can't pull that off. <laughs> I can release a topic like a week late and still get views because I'm just privileged to be where I'm at, like view wise. That like I can do that and YouTube will still promote it. But like to be like what, like a half a year late like you are sometimes and you still get those crazy <laughs> views is just awesome. And I think you deserve it. And oh, I'm just happy that also YouTube is finally respecting long form videos. And I've heard that it pushes them pretty well. Yeah. So it tries to make sure that everyone sees long videos, which is nice because before that was the opposite. It only encouraged like quick shit because it had to be like, this is video percentage watched. Daily now upload, it's just how much watch minutes. time, period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I- now, that it, now that it stacks instead, it's way more in the favor of longer videos, which is good. 
because I think that um sorry for this quick little philosophy oh no problem you know yeah. um <laughs> not rant I guess speech so I feel like old school YouTube was built on that like one oh. person putting all their effort into like a single video and then just releasing it not trying to follow a work schedule which is what it's become now um, for people like me before it was like make a make I mean, a passion project and then release it and just it spreads i mean i don't know if you remember this but early on in the, in the early days of youtube you couldn't release a you couldn't upload a video that was over 10 minutes i think long. so That's very so very funny. early You're on. right it's the very very early now. well well what well, well, i mean well they said they said that but you could actually you could go over 10 minutes as long as it's under 11. Yes, and also like you, you can go 10, 10, 10 minutes yeah. fifty nine. But it's I think you need to be counts. like YouTube partnered if you want to upload over fifteen minutes. I think very early on that was a thing. Now I think about it, yeah. Yeah, you you young when, bloods. When, when when partners started, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Early on, there was no partners at all. Yeah. Also, uh, videos couldn't be over hundred megabytes. Oh that my was another gosh. Issue. <laughs> Jeez, that's so small looking back on it now. Um, you young bloods don't get how easy you have it because back in the day you had to be a YouTube partner to even have a special thumbnail. <laughs> Otherwise, you were limited to just the screenshots from your video, the and you three couldn't pick which one it gave. It was three random ones. Yeah, so you could do tricks. You could have like the last part of your video just be like a single image and just hold it for a few seconds, and oh, it would yeah, like yeah, to get yeah. screenshot. Um, but also, you couldn't go past the ten minutes unless you were partnered. Also, at one point, so when I told people that I could do that, they would go like, "Huh? It won't let me do that." And I'm like, "Well, that's just because I have a bigger following, so I'm allowed to do it." And also, back in the day, you young bloods, YouTube used to look like MySpace. Like your channel page looked oh, yeah. very similar to MySpace. Oh. You could customize the entire the thing from head to toe, oh. and I spent so much time at my school when I was done with my animation project. I would just go into Photoshop and I would add whatever I liked about my stuff there. And then I swear to God, like within half a year, they got rid of that. I went to this stupid little tiny banner and oh, yeah. everyone has it. So you couldn't tell who was partnered right away, which I guess is fair because that way newcomers don't get like lost in the sea of like all the pros. Because before you wouldn't even click a video unless it had a custom thumbnail because you thought, oh, amateur, right? Uh -huh. Now everyone can do a custom thumbnail. So like everyone can get seen as long as your thumbnail is cool and enticing, yeah. which led to clickbait. We won't get into that. But... Um, <laughs> I kind of part of me misses the crazy big like the entire page is your wallpaper I because I miss the MySpace yeah. page. I my when this channel started, I plastered like freaking Sonic and Silver the Hedgehog all over that. <laughs> oh, I miss that. <laughs> Silver <Yeah>. trunks, <laughs> Silver the Hedgehog. <laughs> it's no use. <laughs> the uh, what do you call it's it? It's no use. I, I miss that, and I also miss the star uh, ratings because, like, you know, you could rate your I video don't. five star. Oh, <laughs> ooh, spicy. Well, I, I, I like it now, but the reason I didn't like it back in the day is because all it would take is, like, if you were a small creator like I was, if you got into, like, one heated argument on YouTube, which, by the way, you could not edit comments back in the day, so if you fucked up, <laughs> just get memed on for, like, having a typo by everybody. But um, if you got into, like, a heated argument... It was not impossible for someone to just go to your channel because they're pissed at you and just give a one star on all your videos. And if you're a small channel, you have like at most like a thousand views, so you probably have like only ten ratings. So if you had a perfect five star rating and they put a one star, you're like at three now. <laughs> and it's like, no, my rating just because one asshole like review bombed me. I and so that's I, why I miss it. I, have I don't a, miss it. I have a horrible story to say. And just keep in mind, this is me when I was in elementary school. I was a little brat. I mean, I was a little bit of a... Did you do it? <laughs> what I did was there okay. was a video I released and somebody said, you're dumb or some, some stupid comment. And I hated it <laughs> so much. And I hated it so much. I went to this guy's channel and all he had was like three or four videos and I don't know, play basketball or chatting in school and stuff like that. I gave each of his videos one star, but that's not where the story ends because back in the day, because uh, in our computer class, we learned about how you could go like how to make an account and stuff like that. So I had 10 accounts and I went to his, his channel with each of my accounts and gave it one star on each of them. So the, all of them, and there were, there were no, not a lot of views and stuff like that. So all of them were just like completely review bombed yeah. by one person <laughs> with 10 accounts and, uh, sadly you're not alone i've done that too back <laughs> when they had the lightsaber when it was like red and green but it was still likes and dislikes because this was years ago like over 10 years ago probably when they first okay. added that but um whenever someone pissed me off i do the same thing i had like 10 accounts that i made and i would go to their videos and with each account i would refresh the page and dislike so if they had like five likes and no dislikes they suddenly had five dislikes and five likes so like or just only dislikes and i was like yeah all Hell your yeah. videos are trash bitch Take go that. home cry I'll, to your mommy I'll, 
How Just dare you insult cable, my bitch boy. How dare you insult my How dare you say my video is mid animation. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea that like all the comments says on your video Sonic is just mid and you're like <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, I've only gotten that once still. Only once. So that's a pretty that's a pretty good track record, I will say. <laughs> Oh, I'll add okay, one more that's thing fair, that's yeah. kind of funny um, about the thing. Like, I was stupidly, for some reason, a giant annoying orange fan. So every single one of my alt accounts are like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I love Dameble back in the day. But like, all of them were like an annoying orange character. So you got the the orange as an account, the apple as an account, the pear, the freaking uh, I Justine the passion fruit, and like the, all these like pictures as the account pictures in my alts. <laughs> Damn, so the whole squad rolling in, the whole fruit basket disliking this guy's page. Oh, damn. All of them For doing me, the, um, the, 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 the... I just like stupid star. shit. Because I understand that it's stupid, you know? I didn't think it was quality. I thought it was, like, YouTube poops. But to me, people that love YouTube poops are more weird than people that like Annoying Orange. Because some YouTube poops are just complete trash. They're just random, not even funny. Some mm -hmm. are funny. Like, there's some art that are, like, really good. But a lot of them are just crap. And people, like, obsess over that shit. But I'm weird for finding Annoying Orange entertaining. <laughs> Uh, I just like stupid shit. I even made I made a machinima series on my old YouTube channel that's still up. You'll never find it. It's called like <laughs> the Teabagger or something, and it's got a full scripted like six episodes. Each one is like twenty minutes long. You won't find it, Snake. No one's ever found it. It's got a lot of views too, but no one will find it. It's buried. It's so old. Uh, I think the first episode was like five minutes, but from then on they just get longer because like, I wrote more and more scripts. And the, the cinematography is undeservedly good for how stupid the script is because you can move the camera around in Halo nice. Three. Um, but it's called the teabagger, and it started off as a joke in the cafeteria in middle school, where it's like, dude, what if like a teabagger online was like just a red elite, and he just talked in sound effects like, and just teabagged people, and I was like, that's a show right there, and I made a whole fucking video out about it where he's like the noid, like avoid the noid, you know, he's, just, he's like just a menace. He kills people and teabags them and causes like society to unravel. I even had the recon armor in Halo Three. I unlocked it through all the vidmaster challenges. And I have him teabag a recon armor wearer. And it's the whole plot of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's him uh, trying to kill this recon wearer who's like an elite gamer boy who's too too cool. <laughs> then he just gets killed and teabagged anyway. It's so interesting I think it's that like our video ends with nostalgia. <laughs> Back in the good old days. Well, actually, mm -hmm. uh, un uh, not really refined or an unlike like uh, organized days because like. Uh, I guess nowadays is a lot. There is that in, in in that sense. Where back in the day, it was like, it was a wild west in a sort of way. <laughs> well, I mean, this video I think was was pretty well organized. I think, and I think the main point was that uh, I we were just making stupid shit back in the day, and it, it was fun. Now YouTube like almost requires you to make certain things, yeah, which is a meta. frustrating, and it <laughs> and it makes you do it more often. But I think you and John Tron also have proven that you can also just take your time with something, and if it's good, people will watch it. Yeah, as I will say, like, audience. those are the type of YouTube, like, uh, videos those type of people can make. So, like, I think, like, Maxor or, like, some of these other, like, big YouTube, like, videos that take a long time to make. But, like, whenever they release it, it's, like, people will watch it. It's, like, that's the kind of content they do. Whereas, like, if I do one day just be like, I'm going to start weekly. It's, like, I mean, I could, it could be successful, but it will have big, like, take some time. Um, I, I Like, I think, um, like, your content, Shona Dog, like, is is that type but like you are very like even though you say you're not growing as much but like like what i from what i've heard you do make a lot of money like by doing like what you're doing with like the three 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 videos a week and, and that kind of stuff yeah i'm very aware and very intentionally making the content that i want to make that suits my routine the only way i'm lacking is i'm not i'm playing the rpg wrong i'm putting all my stats into one category when i should be actually make a video and then stream at a very specific time on certain days out of oh. the week. And I should be very consistent with it. And then I should also have a Patreon set up that actually has rewards people want. And then I should also set up a discord that people can go to and also pay money to be on and get certain ranks. And I should also set up more of the memberships, but I'm just, I'm only doing like one or two things right now. And I was about to get on top of all of that. And then I got hijacked and now the wind <laughs> is kind of taken out of my sails and I'm just going to start it. I'll get back into the, the vibe of it again, but I'm still kind of, just yeah, trying start, to get back to regular slow. views again. Start baby steps. Start start the, the live stream. Like take take your time with that. Little stuff. baby feet. Little, little baby <laughs> feet. Little, little baby steps. <laughs> see, see, to me, it's interesting that you two uh, you seem so much more um, uh, positive about the, the idea of like uh, taking your time and such with, with with videos. Whereas with me, it's like I'm currently working on a video where I try and work out 
what route and point in time each of the Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses characters are from when they appear in Fire Emblem Heroes, the, the gacha game. And I know it's not going to do well. <laughs> the video's like 20 minutes. I've been working on it for months. Oh, shit. Like, I've, I've, I, that, that's because I've been doing like bits of research as I played through the game uh, over, over the course of a few months of kept updating the scripts and now I'm, I'm nearing the end of it. It should be hopefully be up in a few days at the time of recording. And I know it's not going to do well because anything on my channel that's not Mortal Kombat or like Resident Evil just doesn't mm. do well. Yeah. So, but it's like, it's, a, it's something I want to make. So exactly. it's a case of I can either take take the hit and, uh, and just make something I, I want to make that I'll, en- I'll enjoy making or I can just keep making the same stuff that it does well and that's all I do and then it's just not creative and fulfilling yeah. encouraging words from underdog and encouraging advice so right now we're in like the lull where nothing relevant is even happening so now is the time to make those passion projects just to make them and, and put them out there I think now is the time to do that because once Mortal Kombat 12 gets here you'll have stuff that you can do both where it's like a passion project but it's also relevant so it'll it'll be the best of both but right now you're in the weird in between so you should be doing that and also you have a day job right so there's no reason to freak out if a video underperforms for me it's actually Ah. scary because i overreact and think this is the end fuck i gotta go back to a regular day job oh my license wore off fuck i have to flip burgers (laughs) ah i'm not good at waiting tables i can't memorize orders fuck i can't do most regular jobs i gotta go back to being a fucking caricature artist at the zoo i hate drawing caricatures ah i'm very impressed that's my midlife crisis you came up with all of that in the fly. That was actually very impressive. <laughs> Those are all real. That's actually what it would go like. <laughs> That's not improv. That's what would actually probably happen. Yeah, I, I do because have that sometimes license too. did actually run out. <laughs> For sure. Like For that, some that, dumb reason, you have to renew the- your license, which is super dumb. I got my fucking degree. I'm a teacher, goddammit. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different over here. I hear stories from my brother, too. But anyways, that's a whole other tangent, basically. Um, Welcome to America, where we don't like teachers. <laughs> <laughs> They're underpaid, which makes them angry, which makes te- which makes students not like them. And the parents already hate the teachers, too, because if they had a bad experience, they pass that energy on to their kids. So, Ooh. Or you can be an elective teacher like me, where everyone loves you because you teach them how to make video games and how to make cartoons and shit. Aww. So they love you. <laughs> that's awesome and also i think you do teach like older students so they're less bratty compared to like yeah. elementary or junior high junior and high is the, the peak good news of is asshole now, now i'm old i'm old <laughs> now too yeah i think junior high is terrible yeah. i also can't have freshmen it's impossible to have freshmen at my school for my class because they all have prerequisites that are in freshman year so i can't have any ninth graders but um uh. thankfully i'm old now because for a while i was like a t- i was a teacher since i was like 22 so i used to get hit on by the students and it was really uncomfortable because I didn't know what the, like how the fuck to like oh, to push that aside, wow. but also not make them hate me. Because it happened more frequently than you would think, wow. which is weird. Because when I was going to school, like everybody was shy. So to me, it's like these Zoomers got fucking courage. They just fucking hit on you, like very <laughs> interesting. Bullshit. What are you doing after huh. school today? And it's like going home. That's <laughs> what I always do. I like the master <laughs> snake that you just showed for like the like a quick second. Mm, no one cared who I was until I put on the mask. <laughs> my my brother is an <laughs> elementary school student, a teacher, so of course he doesn't have these sort of like problems. But it, there were, have been some pretty funny stories where like literally a little kid will walk over to my brother and it's like, uh, "Teacher Saya," he's like, "Yeah, what is it? Can you um, do you want to watch the newest Demon Slayer movie with me?" <laughs> Yes, that happened to me one time. I felt so bad because this girl was like a big anime nerd, which is less common than America. It's still common, but not as common uh, as I imagine in other places. Nice, nice silence. And, too. Um, <laughs> and she was normally really like antisocial, but in my class, she finally came out of her shell and became a more social butterfly and had friends and stuff. Oh, so she was nice. like, you know, getting getting confidence. But then sure enough, she like asked me if she if I could go watch the new My Hero Academia movie with her. Oh. And I was like, normally I'd say yes, but the faculty had a meeting about this um, last year and it turns out I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed oh. to watch movies with students. I'm also, even if we all went as a class, I'm not allowed to do that because oh, it's not considered like a, an education thing. If it was part of a field trip, we probably could, but we can't meet up after school and like and watch a movie. It's, it's considered against the ethics, like the codes of what you can and can't do, which I understand. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, felt bad, I felt bad shooting her down because she was making such progress and stuff. And then she's kind of like, but then she's uh, like, oh, okay. Like when she, when she understood that it wasn't like her, it was just that I'm not allowed to actually do that. 
And before, I didn't know that. I broke rules before not knowing it. I didn't go to the movies, but one kid needed a ride home because his parents weren't able to pick him up. And I, his, he lived nearby. So I just dropped him off. Turns out you're not allowed to do that. You can't oh. put students in your car as a teacher. So like, oh shit. I, I low-key like broke the law. <laughs> or at least broke the, broke the school's law. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, so interesting. I was like, oh, oh shit. Now, to be fair, he was like 17. So he's pretty much an adult. In fact, in Texas, he is legally an adult at 17. So um, it was technically allowed as far as law, but the school doesn't let you do that. Yeah, school, and school there's law. a lot of things you can and can't do. Yeah, school law and regular law, the difference is one is jail time, one is uh, fired. <laughs> and you would uh, you'd love to know how many times uh, that shirtless image came up because they would Google my name and be like, Mr. Boucher, what's that? Oh, wait, mute my name. <laughs> They'd be like, Mr. B, what is this? Have I, have and I I'd go, close that. Oh, wait, actually, I think you have said that name before because you said it was and not they can't very spell common. It. It like, they can't oh, spell it. There's no way. It's got so much weird letters in it. It's, like, way longer than you think it is. So they can't <laughs> even spell it. So I guess you can leave it in. There you but, go, there um, you go. Let's, let's try to have a, have a final, like, ending thing here because, like, we're we're approaching the three a.m. point for me over here. You could you can cut you can cut that entire <laughs> teacher part out and we'll just go straight to this ending. Yeah. Oh, it's it's fun. I kind of like that. And like uh, each episode, uh, the episode will only be two hours anyway, so that's kind of common anyways. Is it now? What should we end it on? Uh, well, I mean, like, I guess we could kind of have a conclusion about the state of play. Genetic. Oh, yeah. Like, um, I guess yeah. Content wise, the. Uh, I think after June, I think, like, at least for a dog, you're going to have, like, a lot of stuff to cover, whether it be tech and Street Fighter or even, like, MK stuff. And then even rumored, like, Project L might be coming out this year, too. Rumored. But we don't know if that's going to happen or not. That's going to be... That game is, has such a weird, weird, staggered, like, re- like, the way they're doing the trailers and promotion for that game is so weird, and I would argue it's, it's bad. But then again, no game can match the great way that mkx was done where every single week we got a new character trailer then that same week we got like a combat cast with the character yeah, yeah. yeah it was so that was like the best way to possibly do it but mk11 still sold well because they used the influencers to get the video out there by doing like early screenings and stuff and we would like show early testing and stuff so we were like free promotion for the game uh, that worked well too do that again warner brothers please i like being flown places for free and getting a free hotel <laughs> and even getting a limo service that was really cool please oh, do that wow. again I, I like cool. my fake celebrity status uh, yeah, it was really cool i got to make an angry joe it was cool Ooh. i thought in mk11 they also did that where it's like after they have a trailer for a character they will then have like oh let's talk about what this character can do and they're like and stuff like that they did but there was gaps in between like it wasn't okay. every week I enjoy yeah. those back when before the game came out. I actually did watch those. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's free content, baby. You get to react to it and talk about it. It's free content. Let's go. There you go. Totally awesome. <laughs> it makes you angry sometimes when you actually play the games and you see a move and they explain it. You go, that's stupid. And you feel bad <laughs> saying that because it's nice that they're like showing you early what's going on. But you can't help but be like, that's dumb. Like when they revealed that Melina's throw crushing blow is different from everybody else's and it's only done by not jumping or being knocked down for 10 straight seconds, and then it's only on the fourth throw, so they can always break it. It's like the worst throw-crushing blow in the entire game for no reason. So when I heard that, I was like, that's dumb, and I just straight up said it. <laughs> it's like, oop, and so, I oop. <laughs> yeah. Well, I also pissed off that one Sindel lady at the Q&A testing, I think, when um, I got to play her early, and I was super excited. And I was, like, I was in one of the NetherRealm places in L.A., and I was playing Sindel early, and I saw the ending. <laughs> and I didn't get mad like like a normal person would. Arcade like, ending, like, right. An actual fan would just rage. Yes, the arcade okay, ending. Okay, okay, got you. And I just went, wow, that's interesting. And she went, right? And I was like, a lot of fans are going to be upset, though. And she went, <laughs> but she didn't get it. And I'm like, like a lot of fans are going to be upset. Like, they're just going to be. And she wouldn't let me come in and play because, like, I thought it was sad that, like, I felt left out because caboose and uncaged were doing like their duo thing at that point in time so they were both in the game playing together and they would just take turns because they had like they're each given an hour to play so they would just switch off but they got like dual commentary like like you know it's more fun and uh, so i heard them i was like sitting outside and i heard them mention true underdog so it's like oh, that's my cue i'm gonna use it no matter what i'm gonna fucking come in there i don't care if they meant to get me my attention or not so i poked my head in and went did somebody say true underdog it's like oh yeah sorry man we didn't bring you up and i was like that's okay room for one more and they went ah. and caboose went i'm completely cool with it because caboose is super chill right uh-huh. uncaged is a very formal guy so he looked at the lady and she looked at me and went for legal reasons we probably shouldn't Aww. and i was like oh 
<laughs> she did. <laughs> super sad. I was like, aw. Bitch about Sindel again, dog. <laughs> I also bitched about Chronica as a boss because, like, it's hard to beat um, Chronica when you're you're in training mode for like 20 minutes getting content. You're looking at the gear for like a few minutes. You're trying to get all the content you can, right? And then it's time to play the arcade mode. There's not much time to lose, and I want to get that um, ending. And I still lost to Chronica barely, and she went, "Oh, so close!" And I was like. I hate Chronica in this game. The boss fight's so weird because she doesn't play like other characters. You can't even combo her. I, I think that bosses should test your knowledge of the character, not just force you to play a certain way. And she was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> I was like, and in my head, there's that second voice going, just keep it inside, you piece of shit. Shut Control your rage. <laughs> just turn it off. Just don't be angry. You're making them not like you. They're not going to invite you back. So I had the Deadpool inner monologue telling me to shut the fuck up, and I still was talking. So Hilarious. classic me, just me being me. So you were still talking like you are now. <laughs> Let's wrap this up, guys. Uh... <laughs> yeah, how shall? <sharp. laughs> it's a, it's a, it's some fun stories, admittedly, but we really should be wrapping yeah, up. Yeah, it now, is I getting think. to three a.m. Uh, like uh, a lot of footage, though. So I think that that'll be great. Let's see. Yeah. Give yeah, us, send us off. Uh, so Anything else you guys want to say before the hot tub reptile comes to shine your future? <laughs> Anything else? Been a weird one. Oh. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad people will be seeing this bef before the actual official debut because of how this episode is going to be done. Um, <laughs> very interesting, yeah. I'm, I'm very curious to see like when people be like, what's up with all the setup and like stuff? Like, how, did, how did all this get here, basically? What, what's this? What am I wearing? What's going on here? <laughs> So well, tune in, tune in next week, and you'll find yeah, out. You'll find out why Reptile is in a hot well, tub. Well, two two weeks, two, two, two weeks, weeks time. By, by week, by yeah, two week, weeks time, but yeah, yeah. And hot tub coming yeah. up. You can do, you can use your IV to stop you can, the, to the camera to turn dog if you wanted to. Ah, uh, she's heavy. Oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lift her. <laughs> All right, see y'all later. Wow. It's the boobs. I have her disembodied hand. End of video. Slice. <laughs>